You're watching Conference USA on ESPN. From Rice Stadium in Houston, it's the Rice Owls hosting the UAB Blazers. With former Rice quarterback Taylor McCarg, I'm Matt Peterson. Taylor, both these teams have a lot to play for today. UAB will clinch its third straight Conference USA West Division title with the win, and Rice can earn its first trip to a bowl game since 2014. Yeah, first game in 42 days for this UAB Blazer team, and they've been anxious to get back on the field for a long time. And then for Rice on the other side, coming off a, a huge victory against Marshall, their first win over a ranked team since 1997. A lot on the line for both of these teams, like you mentioned, and these meaningful games in December. That's what these kids come to play college football for. UAB missing dozens of players today. One big opportunity for that man, Jermaine Brown, the running back. Jermaine Brown's going to have to be featured today. Spencer Brown and Dwayne McBride, UAB's top two running backs, will not play in this game. And for UAB on offense, when they have that run game going, that's when their offense is clicking on all cylinders. Jermaine Brown and the rest of this running back room, they're going to have to step up in place of those two top running backs that are going to be out. And then at the quarterback position, Tyler Johnston, their, their veteran leader, he's going to get the start today. Bryson Lucero, I would imagine we see him as well. They've played both of them in, in several games this year. Tyler Johnson was hurt early in the year against Miami, came in in relief against Louisiana Tech. For him, he's got to get started early. He's got to be clicking for this UAB offense to be successful. As for Rice, he's a senior. He does everything. Jordan Myers, big opportunity today. He's the Swiss Army knife for this, for this Rice Owls offense, and Rice has a few guys out at the skill position as well. He's going to have to step up. Coach Bloomgren couldn't say enough good things about him in our pre-production call early in the week. They put him all over the field. You'll see him line up at tight end, receiver. He returns punts and kicks. He really does everything for them, and, and they feel like good things happen when they get him involved in the game plan. And then at the quarterback position, Giovanni Johnson will get the start again. Mike Collins will be out. He did some nice things against Marshall last week and really a defensive-led victory. But for them to get the win today over UAB, he's going to have to step up in the passing game, and they're going to have to get the ball downfield. High noon kickoff, outstanding weather. Rice has won 11 of its last 12 senior days. They'll try to make it 12 of 13 with a win today. Kickoff from Houston is next. It's senior day in Houston, and for the first time this year, fans allowed in the stands, limited capacity, but an opportunity for the seniors to play in front of friends and family. It is, and, and Rice is so good on senior day over the last few years, like you said at the Open, 11 out of 12 that they've won here. Rice traditionally plays really well in, in November and December, but a good opportunity for these seniors, really on both sides. This game means so much to both of these teams. Colin Riccitelli will kick it off. UAB will receive. Jermaine Brown and TD Marshall back to receive for the Blazers. Here we go from Houston. Into the end zone. A touchback. And now an opportunity, Taylor, for UAB to get back on the field for the first time in 42 days. Uh, tough loss in Ruston in double overtime their last time out on Halloween. That's exactly right. And the week before that, when they played Louisiana Lafayette, had a chance to win that one at home. So they've had a bad taste in their mouth for a long time. Two one-score losses that they felt like they really should have won both of those games. It's been so long since they've been out on the field. I know how anxious this UAB team is to finally be playing again. It's Tyler Johnston, the junior back at quarterback from the shotgun. Hands it off on first down. Nice pickup, breaking a tackle out near the first down marker. A pickup of nine and a half. Good first play. That's Larry Wooden with the first carry. And get ready for this stretch zone from UAB. They feature this out of the pistol formation. This is their favorite base run scheme. You're going to see this all game from this UAB offense. Just the fourth carry all season for Larry Wooden, the junior from Hoover, Alabama. On second and short, Johnston. Out there, nice coverage from the Owls. That was Wooden again with the catch. And you're going to see Blaze Aldridge makes his presence known early in this game. Blaze Aldridge is all over the field for this team. He's the, he's the veteran senior leader on defense. Really nice open field tackle there to force a third and three here. Trey Schumann combining for the stop. 
Rice has not allowed the opposing team to score on the first drive all season. Here's Johnston. Option, flips it out. Rice has it covered up. Great defensive series for the Rice Owls. Blaze Aldrich again there on the tackle. UAB goes with a delayed option. Quarterback Tyler Johnson's got to force this a little bit more downhill. Make, you can't have that uh, an option stretch like that and let the defenders rally to it. Really got to press that play from Tyler Johnston. Nice job by Rice. Again, like you said, very rarely do they give up a lot of points in the first quarter and on that opening drive. Nice three and out there for this Rice House defense. Kyle Greenwell is the punter for UAB. It's Jordan Myers back to receive. That's going to roll inside the 20, down to the 16-yard line. And I think Jordan Myers would be the first one to tell you he, he's got to catch that ball. I think he, he cost them about 20 yards of field position there. Rice, as opposed to starting around the 35, is going to have the ball at the 16 to start this drive. There's Rice huddling with Giovanni Johnson. Excellent game at Marshall as Rice pulled the upset, his first start of the season. And like we mentioned at the Open, Giovanni Johnson, like you said, he, he's, he did some nice things against Marshall, made sure you know he managed the game well. But in this game, they're going to have to get the ball downfield against this UAB defense. Kalen Griffin is in the backfield. Two wide to the left for Johnson. Hands it off to Griffin on first down. Picks up three. And this team for UAB... Really, the strength of this team is on defense. This is the 18th ranked defense in the country in terms of total defense, 12th in the country in terms of pass yards allowed per game. And they're big. They've got to talk about Jordan Smith, 6'7", 250. Alex Wright on the other side, 6'7", 260 as well. They've got, this is a, a, one of the biggest defenses just in terms of size in all of Conference USA. Tyler Taylor, Tony Fair combined for the stop. Another handoff on second down. It's Griffin bouncing outside. He has a first down, and he's knocked over at the 35-yard line. First down, Owls. Really love the vision here, bouncing this immediately. This is designed to go off tackle, and he bounces this around the outside. Nice physical run downfield as well. Good job, Rice Owls, extending this drive. Griffin, freshman from Tyler, Texas, went to Chapel Hill High School. 58 carries, 215 yards for the season. First down, Owls. Johnson fakes the handoff, rolls right. It's Johnson carrying it himself, takes a shot, picks up about five yards. And I love the decisiveness there from Giovanni. This is just a, a, a two-route concept. You have a go and an out. And if it's not there, you take off and run. But if you're Giovanni, you got to get down here. Wiley Green has had meaningful snaps as the backup, and if the worst were to happen, he could step in, and I think Rice would have confidence in him. But you got to know with Mike Collins out for Giovanni, got to keep him healthy, get what you can get, and get down there. You don't need to take those unnecessary hits. Tyler Taylor, Christopher Mole combining for the tackle. Second and four for Rice on the opening series. Johnson will hand it off. It's Griffin just for one or two. That sets up third down for Rice. Well, 48 scholarship players are here in Houston for UAB today. 69 total players, 21 walk-ons. They're missing their top two running backs, their two starting safeties, and three outside linebackers. And when we talked to Coach Clark earlier in the week, he said, look, guys, we're playing this game. We don't know exactly who we're going to bring yet, but we're going to get off this bus with somebody. And to this point, early in this game, you've seen there, there are a couple key positions that UAB is missing having these guys. Third and four for Rice. Handed off to Griffin. Griffin up the middle near a first down. And Griffin picks up the three yards needed. That's good for the Rice Owls. First down. First down, Owls. Really love the effort there, extending the ball. Get that first down, extend this drive. Expect here around midfield. This is middle of the field is where Rice loves to take those shot plays off of play action. I wouldn't be surprised to see one of those in this part of the field. The two safeties that are out today for UAB, Will Bowler and I John Turner. 
Johnson from the shotgun. Gives it to Griffin. Stopped at the line to scrimmage. And when you go back on tape and watch this UAB team, in their front seven, they do such a nice job. A lot of odd fronts, and they'll go even down to a 2-4-5 defense, which is, which is very rare. But their front seven is really the strength of this defense. They did such a nice job against Louisiana Tech. Again, a game that it really, when you watch the game, it feels like they should have won that game. They were in control the whole game. But it, it really does start with UAB's front seven. Antonio Moultrie, the first in the backfield. Tony Fair made the stop. Second and nine for the Owls. Myers in motion. Johnson out to Myers. UAB well covered. A pickup of one or two for Jordan Myers. Nice job by TD Marshall there. Shedding his block, forcing Myers back inside. And a nice job by the rest of this UAB defense rallying to the ball there. I expect to see more out of this from Jordan Myers. Like we talked about. Rice feels like good things happen when they get the ball in his hands. They're going to manufacture ways to get the ball in Jordan Meyer's hands early and throughout this game. Tyler Taylor with the tackle for UAB. Third and seven for Rice. Johnson under pressure out to Myers. He makes the catch. He stretches for the first down. This is such a great play by Jordan Myers. Catches this ball uh, about a yard and a half short and has the body control. Watch this at the very end. He's going to extend this out and pick up that first down. That's a huge conversion there. And a nice job by Giovanni Johnson with pressure barreling down on him. Slides left and gets the ball out for a first down for Rice. We see Bailey come off along with Myers. Bailey was questionable for today. Limited in practice all week after a big game at Marshall last weekend. Two in the backfield, including Jerry Johnson, the fullback. It's pitched back to Griffin. He'll spin his way forward, still tumbling forward for a pickup of eight. And that's exactly, that's an ideal scenario for Rice. When you talk about bringing these two tight end formations in, you're running right between the tackles, old school power football. When you run, they, they love to run on first down out of these type of power formations, get ahead of the sticks, an eight yard carry. That second and two opens up the full playbook from Coach Mike Bloomgren. Jerry Johnson stays in at fullback. Former center, now a fullback for Rice. They stick with Griffin. Runs into a sea of white shirt, sets up third down for Rice. And you see the jumbo formation coming in, a couple offensive linemen substituting in. Third and short, uh, imagine that this is going to be between the tackles. We have another one coming off here, but I expect their short yardage, they love to just keep it between the tackles. A lot of times it's that quick toss between you know, the, the guard off the either A or, or B gap. It's Johnson, the fullback. Myers behind him on third down. Johnson for Myers. Myers met in the backfield. He is stopped. Johnson hands off to Myers. And he will Tony Fair, the first to meet Jordan Myers. Such a great play by Tony Fair, stepping up here, physical at the point of attack. But look at how many white shirts you see there, right? Rallying around the ball carrier. And at fourth and two around midfield, Rice has gone for it on fourth down a couple times. We saw it against North Texas earlier in the year, although it looks... It does look like we'll see if they actually snap the ball and, and go for it here. But to this point, it looks like they're going to try and go for it on fourth down. Jaker Bull comes in along with Griffin. Rice on the season, three for seven on fourth down. And Rice calls time. Fourth and two for Rice. Here in the first quarter from Rice Stadium. Fourth and two for Rice after the timeout. Johnson in the backfield with Griffin. It's Johnson with an option. He'll go up the middle and get the first down. 
Love this play design, fake the pitch. Giovanni gets between the tackles, which is where he's such an effective runner. And this is a big guy, right? 6'3", 215 pounds, gets that frame going downhill to extend the drive. And love that it's a, that's a gutsy call from Coach Bloomgren early in this game to, to keep your offense on the field. Johnson, a redshirt freshman from Conway High School, Conway, Arkansas. Rice picking up first downs here on the opening series. Johnson remains in the backfield with Griffin. It's handed to Griffin. He lost his footing, went down immediately, a loss of three. Getting a lot of bodies close to the line of scrimmage for UAB. They're, they're showing a, a man defense in the passing game with, you've got eight guys within three yards of the line of scrimmage. I expect Rice, if you're seeing this man coverage on the back end, expect them to take a shot down the field. But UAB has, has so many bodies between the tackles trying to clog up this interior run game. The last few interior rushes for Rice have really gotten stymied right at the line of scrimmage. That one for a three-yard loss. Myers and French out to the right. Johnson steps up. Johnson turns the corner. Johnson has a blocker. And he's wrestled down a few yards shy of the first down marker. Yeah, love Giovanni's decisiveness here. Once he decides to take off, he makes his one cut and goes. Now puts his, his offense back in a position with a short third down here. Jalen Ryan with this tackle for UAB. Jake Bailey comes to the sidelines. Andrew Mason, the freshman, off to the right. Two lefts for Johnson with Griffin in the backfield. Johnson will hand it off. Griffin near a first down, looks a bit short. Now fourth and short for the Owls. And again, if you're Coach Mack, offensive coordinator for Rice, if you leave the offense on the field, it looks like they're going to bring in some more of the, the, the big guys in, swapping some offensive linemen out for skill guys. They're in Colin Riccatelli's range if they wanted to kick a field goal, but looks like they're going to go for it again on this fourth and short. Myers in the backfield. You have two fullbacks in front of them, including Johnson. Johnson to Myers. He'll leap forward. And he has a first down. And like we talked about, they're going to have, how many times do you see a tight end get carries at running back for Jordan Myers? Love the creativity here. All you need is a half yard, right? And Jordan Myers is a big dude, able to pick up this first down, it appears. Jack of all trades, Jordan Myers. He was a running back in high school and a running back before Bloomgren became here, moved to tight end, but now in his fifth season at Rice, he's doing everything. Now returning kicks, he's the running back on a short yardage situations, and of course the tight end. Yeah, they really have him do everything, especially with some of these skill players that we talked about for Rice that, that are down. Rice with a great opening drive here. We'll see if they're able to convert this with a timeout coming here from UAB. UAB calls time. What a series from Rice. They force a three and out on UAB's first possession. They're on the move. Houston Methodist, the official health care provider of Rice Athletics, HoustonMethodist.org. After the Marshall, or uh, UAB timeout, excuse me. It's first down for Rice. Johnson looking to his right, out to Myers. And he makes the catch. He got a foot inbounds at the eight yard line. Incredible body control by Jordan Myers here. They run the wheel route up the seam and he's not winning this route. It, it, the defender is over top of him. Giovanni does a nice job putting this sort of back shoulder. We're gonna take a, I imagine they take a look at this. It'll depend on if that first foot gets down because the second one looks like it comes down out of bounds. But incredible catch there. We'll, we'll see if that first foot was inbounds when he was making the catch. Impressive drive for the Owls here, their first offensive series. That's what they're going to have to look at. It's not that left foot. It's before. It's right there. Does he have possession of the ball when that right foot is still on the ground? Right there. And it looks like on that replay that he does. I don't know if we have another look at it, but 
it's definitely not that second foot. That, that left foot comes down out of bounds. If that right foot is on the ground, when they say that he has possession of it, then that's going to stand as a catch. It's a 17-play drive with nearly 11 minutes off the clock for Rice on the opening series of the 17 plays, three pass plays, and 14 rushing plays for a total of 54 yards. It's the Mike Bloomgren mantra since coming over from Stanford. Now in year three, it's pound the rock, control the clock, and play great defense. It is, and that's exactly, if when you talk to Coach Bloomgren about what do you have to have to have sustained success for this offense, it's taking care of the football, and you got to have a couple of these long drives that, that result in touchdowns. Some of the issues early in the year were not able to, you know, on these long drives, either you know, having to kick a field goal or go back to the North Texas game. They go for it on a fourth and two in the red zone. They don't get any points out of that. Rice is they're one of the bottom teams in the country right now in red zone offense. So these trips into the red zone, right, it's not a high-powered offense. They're not going to throw the ball 50 times a game and get a ton of shots at it. So when you get down there, you have to convert those into touchdowns. We'll see here, to me, on that replay, it does look like that right foot was down. And we'll see here with the call if they're saying that he had possession with that right foot. Yeah, so they're so they're saying that that when that right foot was on the ground, when this right foot's on the ground, they're saying he did not maintain, but he didn't have possession of the ball yet, which is close. I'm surprised if they if they call on the field that it was a catch. I'm surprised that they reverse it I from agree. there. A lot of times it's got to be inconclusive. F, it, it, this would be inconclusive to me, but they were able to go back, say that when that left foot came out of bounds, that's what resulted in incomplete pass. So second down and ten here from the 21 for Rice. Myers and Robert French, the tight ends, off to the left. Second down for Rice after the incompletion. After video review. This will be the 18th play of the opening drive for Rice. Griffin offset right next to Johnson. Johnson out to Myers, hit immediately, nearly stayed on his feet. Nice tackle in the open field by TD Marshall. Well, this to me either looks like there's a, a miscommunication in what the play is or a miscommunication with Giovanni on what he thinks coverage is. If they're in man, he's going to try and get it to, to Jordan Myers and expects that he'll be left open. Otherwise, Robbie French out wide, I think he might have been expecting that he's going to be picking up the corner there. Either way, Jordan Myers really lucky that he wasn't blown up on this one. Sets up a long third down here. TD Marshall made the tackle. Four touchdowns as a wide receiver at Samford before transferring to UAB and becoming a defensive back. Third down for Rice. Johnson will keep it himself. Ankle tackle at the 22-yard line. Quarterback draw, you go back and watch on tape. It's one of the things UAB does such a good job of repeatedly on third down. They've played a lot of mobile quarterbacks this season. UAB very rarely gives up plays, big plays on quarterback draw, which is what you saw there. So sets up a, about a 40-yard field goal here for Colin Riccatelli. Christopher Mole and Tyree Turner Combined for the tackle. Riccatelli, six for nine on the season. From 40 yards, Mendez the holder. Riccatelli's kick is up. It is good. Rice with the opening score. A 19 play drive that takes 10 minutes, 38 seconds off the clock. And it ends with Riccatelli's field goal. Welcome back, a 20-play drive for the Rice Owls. Javani Johnson earned many of those yards. Halen Griffin carried the ball most of the time for Rice. And now back underway, the second kickoff today for Colin Riccatelli. And the return caught at the one-yard line out to the 25-yard line. That's where UAB will begin at second offensive series. And for Rice, you're never going to be upset, right, when you put points on the board. But exception, I mean, it's rare that you see a 12-minute drive that's capped off with a field goal. And for Rice, that's one of the things that Coach, Bl Coach Bloomgren has stressed is they've got to figure out a way to punch these into the end zone when they get those red zone trips. But for a, their first drive of the game to, to 
drive downfield the way they did. A couple nice, really nice jobs on, uh, by Giovanni Johnson on third down, extending drives. We'll see here from UAB what their answer is with Tyler Johnson in this offense. Johnston hands it off on first down. Nice pick up, the featured back here in the first quarter. Somewhat surprising me has been Larry Wood, and we featured Jermaine Brown, but 25's had his number called more often than not. And we knew, when we talked to Coach Clark earlier in the week, he said, look, our running back room, they're all going to get snaps. And so Larry Wood and Jermaine Brown, these guys are going to have to, with, with Spencer Brown and Dwayne McBride out in this game, these guys are going to be featured all game, and, and this is an opportunity for them to step up. Second and five for the Blazers, handed off again. And nice work chasing him down. That was DeBraylin Carroll. Had a sack last week. Chased down tackle that time. And that's the end of the first quarter. Ball control drive for Rice. Ending with the Riccatelli field goal. Rice up three after one on senior day. Are we back? Start of the second quarter, third down for UAB. Johnson out to the right, nearly intercepted by Bird and incomplete. Great play by Andrew Bird there, stepping in between. And that's exactly, again, what this, what this Rice defense, if you're able to force these three and outs, you saw what they were able to, they were able to do. If you're UAB, you've got to figure out a way to extend these drives. You can't have back-to-back -back three and outs when this Rice offense has a 12-minute drive. Their defense is going to be exhausted. Going to have to figure out a way to move the chains if you're this UAB offense. Trey Shropshire, the intended receiver, the best receiver for UAB, opted out this week. Austin Watkins, he's an NFL prospect, eighth all-time in UAB for receptions. Here's the punt from Greenwell. Fair caught at the 32 yard line by Myers and some flags come in as Myers made the fair catch. Which was just, uh, it was bizarre, right? He ran right up to him and almost patted him. You got to give him some sort of a halo. I know the, the old school halo rule has gone away, but you do have to give the returner an opportunity to catch the ball. You can't have any sort of contact with them ahead of time. Fifteen yard penalty. This was critical last week at Marshall. Several untimely penalties for Marshall really set up the rice field position. And that's what again, like we talked about, UAB has their first two possessions of the game. We're already in the second quarter. Their first two possessions of the game, both three and outs. Rice now with short field position at midfield. Set up nicely here. Again, like we talked about, in that that first possession, we only saw two passes for Giovanni Johnson. I know he had a couple scrambles, but would imagine here again at midfield, that's where you see a lot of their shot plays. Would not be surprised here on first down with good field position if we see one. After Griffin was the featured back in the first quarter, Ari Broussard, the redshirt sophomore, comes in. Off to the left, Johnson will hand it off. It's a sweep. Mason wrestled down after a loss of two. Late flag comes in. And we'll see from where this was thrown if this is going to be for a face mask or if they're calling horse collar here. And it looks like, it looks like they're calling horse collar based on that replay. And it, they called face mask there. I'd, I'd love to see a different angle of it. It looked to me like he, he, maybe he slapped the face mask. I'm not sure that he pulled it, but we'll get another shot at it here. That's Mason, the wide receiver, on the sweep to the left. And there it is. Yeah, absolutely. So 15-yard, you go back-to-back 15-yard -back penalties here for UAB. You talked about timely penalties or untimely penalties, rather, for Marshall last week. We're seeing some of that here for UAB. They're shooting themselves in the foot early in this game. Christopher Mole with the penalty. Great field position for Rice. That's Johnson, the fullback, in front of Ari Broussard in the backfield. Two to the right for Johnson. It's pitched back to Broussard. He chugs forward for two or three. Great story, Ari Broussard. He got to Rice on his own, not as a football player. He just applied and was accepted and emailed Coach Bloomgren and said, I want to play. And Bloomgren said, why don't you come out? We need linebackers. This was a couple years ago. 
after his first season as a walk-on linebacker, said, I want to play offense. I think I can contribute more. And he's earned this opportunity. Has never really been healthy through a camp, but here in 2020, healthy enough to contribute late in the season. Johnson under center. Myers in the backfield. Out to Myers. He has space. Well tackled at the 38-yard line by UAB. And a good job again by this UAB secondary. This is another wrinkle on that sale concept we saw early in the game. Outside receiver runs a go, inside receiver runs an out. This time they slip Jordan Myers into the flat. And on the back end, more good coverage out of this UAB secondary. Like we talked about, this, they're, they're number 12 in the country in pass yards allowed per game. This, and I know they have a couple guys out, but schematically these guys for UAB, they're always in the right spots. They tackle well. And we saw again, Rice is going to continue to manufacture these plays that get the, the ball in Jordan Myers' hands. Bailey in motion. Myers off to the right. Mason off to the left. Giovanni Johnson. It's caught. Bailey near a first down for Rice. That's a huge conversion. For, and that's the, the, these are the type of plays that instill confidence in your quarterback, in Giovanni Johnson. Still a young guy, right? Doesn't have a ton of snaps and starts under his belt. Those third down conversions, we've seen him move the chains, whether on third or fourth down early in the game. Those are the things that, the, the confidence builders that you love to get for your young quarterback. Johnson four for five today. Was 10 of 14 for 86 yards last week in the upset at Marshall. Broussard in the backfield. Mason off to the left. Out to Myers. Immediately wrapped up. Nice pursuit in the open field. And that play, we saw a lot of that. Go back to the first game of the year for Rice against Middle Tennessee. Outside receiver blocks up on the corner. They get the ball to Jordan Myers' hands in the flats. UAB has done a really nice job early in this game of rallying to the football and taking that specific play and that sort of route combination away from this Rice offense. Safety, Damon Miller with the open field tackle. Second down for Rice from the 28-yard line. It's Broussard cutting left. Picks up about two. And again, eight in the box. A lot of guys hovering around the line of scrimmage. You, anytime you see, you'll see some interior penetration there. Really nice job up front. Tony Fair, number 90, with the, with the penetration early. That's how you blow up well, really any sort of interior run game, but especially for this Rice Owls offense that they're going to bring two tight ends in and run right at you. UAB's done a really nice job in their interior D line of disrupting a lot of this interior run game for Rice. Myers out to the right. Empty backfield with Giovanni Johnson on third down. Johnson will take it up the middle. Knocked down Johnson at the 25-yard line. This sets up a long field goal for Riccatelli. I think you'd like to see a little more creativity out of the Rice offense on third down. That's back-to-back -back third downs that they've gone with a quarterback draw. And again, you go back and look on tape. UAB does not give up a lot of plays to scrambling quarterbacks. They do a really nice job in containment, whether that's with disruption up front. A lot of times they'll leave a spy, a linebacker that's just spying the quarterback. But back-to-back -back third down quarterback draw calls for Rice, and neither one of them were very productive. Riccatelli good from 40 yards in the first quarter. This one from 41. Mendez with the hold. The kick is up. And late whistles. There was a flag that came in late. And this will go against UAB. And this is going to be an offsides by UAB. Not enough for a Rice first down. Would imagine you see the field goal unit stay out on the field. Uh, again, UAB shooting themselves in the foot. Going to give this Rice kicking team another, uh, another opportunity where they should have been off the field and not giving up any points there. Riccatelli now four for six on the season from 40 yards or more. The last owl with more than four from 40 yards or more. Your former teammate Chris Boswell who had eight from that distance in 2013. Now from 36. Colin Riccatelli. The kick is up. And good. Two field goals here in the first half. Rice controlling the clock. They lead by six. 
here in Houston. Rice dominating the time of possession battle. This pass out to Myers, doing it primarily on the ground. There's Ari Broussard for the Owls. And Rice, uh, again, red zone offense. You hope that they've got to figure out a way to get a little more creative on those third downs. Two back-to-back -back possessions with field goals, getting points, but against this UAB offense, you've got to imagine at some point in this game, you're going to have to figure out a way to punch these into the end zone. Jermaine Brown, TD Marshall back to receive. Fair caught at the five yard line by Brown. Uh, Riccatelli, good from 36, good from 40. A critical offside penalty though. That was a missed Riccatelli off, uh, field goal off the upright. But after the offside, moved up five yards. He's been good from 36 and 40 today. And you see here from the, the team comparison, this is a dream scenario for Rice, especially if they were able to, to convert one of these for a touchdown. But look at that time of possession. They've, they've controlled the clock. They've dominated the clock to this point in the game. If you're UAB, got to figure out a way to extend some of these drives and give your defense a breather. Johnston back in at quarterback. Fakes the handoff. Big ball down the field. Caught at the 35-yard line. Ankle tackle saves a touchdown from Trey Sean Chamberlain after the catch was made by Trey Shropshire. This is a, a just a, a skinny post. Nice job on the play action. You're going to see a ton of this. We talked about that stretch zone earlier. Gets behind the defense. Really nice pitch and catch there. That's the big pop play. We see a lot of that out of UAB. They take shots downfield, and they hit on a lot of them that you saw right there. Now, really in an have an opportunity here get some points on the board, and flip that time of possession that we talked about. Second catch of the season for Trey Shropshire. Hands it off on first down. Up to the 16-yard line. You know, when you turn on the tape for UAB, think back to like a Gary Kubiak-style offense from when he was with the Texans and then the Broncos and now the Vikings. A lot of stretch zone and a ton of play action off of it. That's what this UAB offense is known for. They do such a nice job in that play action game. And aside from a couple turnovers against that La Tech game, they really controlled the clock and controlled that game. We go back to it. They really felt like they should have won both that game and against ULL. Lucius Stanley in the backfield. It was primarily Wooden in the first quarter. There's Pittman, the tight end, just put in motion. They go back to Stanley. Now Stanley slowed down, nice tackle. By Elijah Garcia, who we had a conversation with yesterday along with Coach Gloomgren, and you asked him what's his best quality as a football player. He says, I have grit, which really helps on those long drives when you're on the defensive side of the ball. And that's what you, it was such a great answer out of an, out of an interior defensive lineman, right? And that does embody him. He is a gritty, physical player that wants to be in the trenches. Huge third and short here for both of these teams. Wooden in the backfield behind Johnston. It's handed off to Wooden. Up the middle, this is near a first down. He's still wrestling forward. Good second effort. That was a great effort there by Larry Wooden. Initially stood up, looked like he might be short, and he ends up fighting for almost a five-yard gain there to extend this. Now Larry Wooden, redshirt junior, started his career at Arkansas State, was a running back and wide receiver. 14 carries, 54 yards last year, only three carries all season before today, but he's been the primary back with both Spencer Brown and Dwayne McBride out. First down and goal for UAB. They go back to Wooden. He cuts left and up to the six and a half yard line. This is a UAB offense also that does such a good job converting their trips to the red zone into points. One way or another, 94% of their trips to the red zone, they're going to get some sort of points. And almost three out of four of those trips, they're going to score a touchdown. Usually when they get in this area, they either come away with points, and a lot of times it is actually in a touchdown, which to this point in the game, right, Rice has controlled the clock, controlled the ball. They score a touchdown here, all of a sudden they're down. And that's what we talk about where Rice has got to figure out a way to convert their trips to the red zone into touchdowns so they're not put in these situations. 54-yard pass to Trey Shropshire, the key play of this drive for UAB. 
Johnston from the shotgun. Lucius Stanley rolling to his right. Turns the corner. He's into the end zone. Lucius Stanley loves playing against Rice. Couple touchdowns against Rice last season. He's into the end zone here in 2020. Just another stretch zone, and they're able to get the corner. UAB sets the edge. Really nice job on the perimeter blocking. And just like we talked about, UAB in, in one drive is able to make up what an, you know, a quarter and a half where Rice really controlled the clock and dominated that stretch of time. And in one drive, UAB with a, a made PAT here will take the lead. Matt Quinn on for the point after touchdown. It's up and good. Lucius Stanley, his second touchdown of the season after a big pass play from Tyler Johnston to Trey Shropshire. UAB up a point in Houston. Second quarter in Houston. Six play, 75 yard drive, took 3.14 off the clock. The key play, Trey Tropshire's season long 54 yard catch from Tyler Johnston. Kobe Neenan with the kick into the end zone. Rice will start its third series from the 25. That was a great answer there by UAB, exactly what they needed. It just felt the first two drives for them a little out of sorts. Their run game to this point really hasn't been, aside from that stretch zone for the touchdown there, it really feels like you haven't seen any of the pop plays from them that you're accustomed to in the run game. But you talked about that for, for Trey Shropshire over the top on that skinny post, exactly what they needed to, to get that momentum. And like we talked about, Rice has really dominated a quarter and a half of this game, but then with six minutes left in the, in the second quarter, find themselves down. So going to have to, if you're Rice, have to figure out a way to convert these red zone trips into touchdowns. Rice missing Mike Collins, it's starting quarterback. Juma Odoviano, it's starting running back. And Austin Trammell, it's leading receiver. Johnson, back to pass. Over the middle, caught at midfield. Jack Bradley, his third catch of the year. This is such a nice throw by Giovanni Johnson because this is just a, a nine route, right up the seam by the tight end. But the tight end it has a defender right on his back. You're not really able to drop this in. So Giovanni Johnson pulls him to the middle of the field. Really nice pitch and catch there. That was a veteran throw out of Giovanni Johnson. 22-yard pass play from Johnson to Jack Bradley. The sophomore from Dallas. Broussard to the left. It's handed to Griffin. Griffin up the middle. Picks up two. Starting to see a, a couple other wrinkles. To this point, Rice running between the tackles hasn't been particularly effective. But you saw there bring a receiver in motion, just add another wrinkle, try and show this UAB front something a little bit different, pick up a couple yards there at midfield. French comes in, an extra tight end. Jake Bailey goes to the bench. Griffin to the left of Giovanni Johnson. Johnson hands it off on second down. Pickup of three. And these defensive coordinators across the country, a lot, and it's a copycat sport, copycat league in Conference USA. You're getting a lot of the same coverage, this man defense, because Rice is just not known for stretching the ball down the field. Seeing a lot of guys hovering around the line of scrimmage playing man defense on the outside. We'll see here. Third and medium, third and long, UAB loves to bring pressure. Really creative in their blitz packages. We'll see if they do it right here. Broussard in the backfield. Johnson. Flushed out. And he picks up one. Nice pass defense from UAB. Good coverage downfield. They are leaving a spy in. UAB is for Giovanni Johnson. They're not going to – you saw early in the game a couple of Rice's bigger plays to this point have been – Giovanni with his legs extending a play. I would imagine UAB is going to try and put the clamps down on that and say, if you guys are going to hit your big plays, Giovanni's going to have to do it through the air. We're not going to let him beat us with his legs. Charlie Mendez on for his first punt of the day. Big footsteps following Jack Fox and Chris Barnes, both in the NFL. Redshirt freshman from Van Nuys, California. Fair catch. 
Made at the 11 yard line by Myron Mitchell. Johnston and UAB offense coming back on the field with the one point lead here at Wright Stadium. Many of the buildings on campus, such as Patterson Sports Performance Center and the Walt Trip Training Center, were wired by members of the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, IBEW. Peterson with former Rice quarterback Taylor McCard. After the punt for Mendez, UAB sets up on the 10 yard line. Johnston, the quarterback, hands it off right side. Great tackle in the open fields. That was Chamberlain first to arrive, and then Kirk Lockhart. And really nice penetration there by DeBraylin Carroll, number 55 up front. This is one of the things, really both of these fronts, we've seen penetration by these defensive lines that are winning at the point of attack, getting upfield, and then both of these teams have done such a nice job rallying to the football. You see multiple hats getting to the ball and getting ball carriers to the ground. That was Jermaine Brown. We figured he'd be the featured back today, but it's been more of Larry Wooden and Lucius Stanley. We'll see if Brown gets extended carries here on this series. Back to Brown, up the middle. Bounces off Naeem Smith and then wrestled down by Elijah Garcia. This is another huge third and medium here for UAB to extend the drive because if they're not able to, right, if they don't pick up this first down, you're going to get Rice again with, with field position around midfield with enough time left on the clock. This is huge for this UAB. Whether, whether or not they actually get downfield and score any points, you don't want to give Rice the ball back with a short field going into half. Jermaine Brown, a sophomore, was on the scout team as a wide receiver before moving to running back last year. Chamberlain showing late as a potential blitzer. It's Johnston. Has a man, it's Pittman. First down UAB. Pass is 16th catch of the year for Hayden Pittman, the fifth year senior from Spanish Fort, Alabama. Good read here by Tyler Johnston. He's originally looking at that inside seam. Looks like he's going to take a shot. They drop off. Nice job to Hayden Pittman picking up that first down, extend this drive. They've used Pittman in different spots today, sometimes in the backfield that time. Out wide, here he is in motion. Johnston fakes the handoff. He's looking downfield. And it is incomplete. Very catchable ball for Samario Rudolph. And that's when you go back on tape, you're going to be sick to your stomach, right? They have this one. They run a double post concept, and this is a, a really nice read. Gets it to the outside guy by Tyler Johnston. Have to convert and catch those opportunities. You just don't see too many of those. But we did talk about UAB takes shots downfield, and a lot of times they, they hit it a pretty decent percentage. That one should have been one as well. It would have been Rudolph's first catch of the year as a redshirt freshman from Mobile, Alabama. Second down for UAB. Johnston will hand it off. It's Brown past the 30-yard line. Blaze Aldridge with the tackle. More stretch zone. Good job here at the point of attack by the UAB offensive line, holding their blocks, setting up a, a, a manageable third and short here. Aldridge, the reigning Conference USA Defensive Player of the Week. Career full of accolades for Aldridge, the senior out of Kissimmee, Florida. Third down and three for UAB. Johnson has Brown to his right. Pittman in motion. Johnston. Aldridge blows up that near first down. Pass intended for Jermaine Brown. Blaze Aldridge, we're going to call his game or call his name throughout this game. He times this up about as, I mean, that is bang, bang like we talked about. You can't say enough about Blaze Aldridge, though. Go back and watch the tape when they play at Marshall. He's all over the place, was instrumental in that win. You got to imagine, I mean, that's one of the guys when who knows what's going to happen moving forward with who comes back, but you got to imagine Coach Bloomgren would love to see him come back next year because he's all over the field for this Rice defense. Kyle Greenwell back to punt. Jordan Myers back to receive for Rice. Myers a fair catch at the 16-yard line. 
Number Rice Rice defense the responds. They force the punt. Rice back with the ball in offense with 119 to work with. Down a point in Houston. UAB head coach is Bill Clark, 2018 Eddie Robinson National Coach of the Year after a program record 11 wins, 32 wins since 2017, time for the most in the conference, and he's built this program after a two-year hiatus on defense. Rice back out there, it's Giovanni Johnson on first down, over the middle, caught by Bailey, first down yardage, and a flag comes in late. We'll see what happens with the flag here, but such a nice job by Giovanni Johnson standing in there, took a shot after delivering that. We'll see if this stands. Well, Bailey was questionable this week. Game time decision, according to Coach Bloomgren, but he's out there. Austin Tramble is not. I'm not sure what the confusion here is. It appears to be defensive PI. We also wondered there, will Rice come out conservative and, and run the clock? UAB does still have two timeouts. Obviously, they, they come out firing, and we'll see here. It looks like they're going to try to put together a two-minute drill, get some points before half. Seven catches for 57 yards last week at Marshall for Bailey. That one will go down as pass interference. Three wide, Broussard in the backfield with Johnson. Johnson under pressure, out to Broussard. Broussard rumbling near the first down marker. And flag all the way back in the direction of Giovanni Johnson. You wonder if this is going to be roughing the passer. Number 30, Broussard with a catch. And that was back-to-back -back shots they put on Giovanni Johnson. Thought you might see it on the first one, but you're going to get roughing the passer here. UAB's had some penalties early in this game, just untimely keeping Rice drives alive and giving them better field position. Now you're Rice on the other side of midfield, minute and five seconds left with two timeouts. Perfect opportunity here to get some points before half, take that momentum into half with you. Broussard remains in the backfield off the hip of Johnson. Fake of a handoff. Johnson steps up. Incomplete intended receiver was Robert French. Really nice job there in coverage by safety Damon Miller, number 26. You're going to see him step down and disrupt this at the last second. Really nice play there in coverage. And we saw the awareness from Broussard on that screenplay. They love his work in protection. That's earned his opportunity as a running back and that time he was making a catch in the backfield and nearly a first down pickup here's Johnson empty backfield low throw handled by Myers he's out of bounds near the first down marker and Giovanni does a nice job he's got pressure at his feet steps back this is an off balance throw that a lot of these kids practice now you'll see he's got somebody right at his hip Steps up, gets this ball out to Jordan Myers and extends the drive. They do get the first down there. Not an easy catch for Myers on a full sprint across the fields. Damon Miller with another tackle. Broussard comes off. Griffin back in the backfield. Andrew Mason out to the right. Myers and Bailey off to the left for Johnson. And UAB showing pressure here, and they back off of it. another screen coming. It's a screen for Bailey. Bailey up to the 26-yard line. Bloomgren That's calls time. time back to we've yes. seen a, a couple screen plays on this drive, and that's something Rice is not known for a lot of their screen game. This one just a tunnel screen to Jake Bailey. Does a nice job. Again, we didn't know if he was going to play in this game, so it's good to see him out there running around healthy. Rice with an opportunity here. Again, we talked about early in the game, those two field goals, they weren't able to punch it into the end zone. With this UAB offense starting to warm up, got to figure out a way to score a touchdown here. You're not going to be able to trade field goals in this game. Well, Bailey, his best game of the season last week at Marshall, seven catches, 57 yards. 
16 catches on the year before play today with a couple touchdowns. Johnson's been excellent. 10 of 12 for 50 yards here in the first half in his second start of the season. He's played really nice, and he played nice against Marshall as well, 10 of 14 in that game. You look at the stat line, you say, well, look, you know, the quarterback only had 82 yards passing. He wasn't asked to throw the ball downfield. He did exactly what he was, was asked of. He managed the game really well, and his poise in this game, UAB's front seven has got after him. He's been hit a couple times. He stood in there and has been accurate under pressure. Broussard in the backfield, off to the left of Johnson. Bailey on the near side. Johnson over the middle has a man it's caught he'll die for the end zone he's in Jordan Myers with the touchdown Rice takes the lead who we talked about at the open Jordan Myers he's an impact player for this Rice offense you're going to see him on the corner route Giovanni Johnson's looking his way the whole time hits him on the corner route really accurate throw and again Jordan Myers we saw the ball control earlier in the game does it again to make sure he Catches the ball, extends it out for that touchdown. Huge play going into half, and that's the momentum that this Rice team needed. He beats the coverage of Noah Wilder. Fifth-year senior, Jordan Myers. And we asked him, how do you manage the workload? You're in the special teams group. You're with the tight ends. You're with the running backs. And he credited fall camp. He says, when you're in all these roles, you have to get to the fundamentals. Great coaches who have giving me extra time after practice. And he's a ball player. Those are the guys, you, you trust them to just step in. Austin Trammell's very similar. You trust him that in any situation, you trust guys like that to sort of figure it out and to be prepared for all these different roles. Riccatelli on for the PAT. And it's up and good. 13-7, Rice leading with 38 seconds left here in the first half. And the offense for both teams coming alive here in the second quarter. They are, and you know what's so interesting about this Rice offense going into the season, they had been known for their power run game, pounding the rock. Almost all of their offensive production was on the ground the last couple of years. Mike Collins comes in, 10, 10 touchdowns to one interception. Most of the big plays throughout this season for Rice have been in the pass game, not the run game. And we've seen that today as well. The, the running game for Rice between the tackles hasn't been effective at all. Really the only shot play or the, the bigger plays in the run game we've seen have been Giovanni Johnson extending plays on, on third and long. And for you saw that drive right there, a couple nice screen passes got Jake Bailey involved. And Jordan Myers again caps off that drive. The Rice passing game is coming alive. I think they're giving Giovanni Johnson, putting a little more on his plate and trusting him a little bit more as this game goes on. Squib kick with under 40 seconds left, handled the 25 yard line. He'll bounce out to the left, nice tackle in the open field. UAB here still with enough time to put a drive together. 34 seconds, two timeouts, 33 seconds, two timeouts. They've got enough time, get a couple plays over the middle, get downfield and see if you can get yourself in field goal range. Kirk Lockhart with the tackle. Key part of the secondary made the special teams tackle. And when we asked Jordan Myers yesterday about where he learned his confidence from of being a versatile player, he went to his high school coach at Dickinson High School, John Snelson. He said he first believed in me as a receiver, moved me to tight end, fullback, all over the field in his high school days. 33 seconds left for UAB. It's handed off on first down. Nice pickup, Jermaine Brown. He'll cut to his right and get smashed by Lockhart, who just made the special teams play. And timeout UAB as they get to the 45-yard line. First down, Blazers. Yeah, 25 seconds left here, and they're close to being in Matt Quinn's range. UAB's kicker, Matt Quinn, has a, a real opportunity to be a freshman All-American. He's 8 of 9 on the year and has range. He's perfect, 3 of 3 for field goals over 40 yards. Hasn't been tested beyond 50 yards this year, but talk about Anytime you're perfect with, with three kicks on the year in that 40-yard range, that's a reliable kicker at the, at the college level. They don't have too much left to go here to get into his range. He had some confidence. He had his season best 45-yard kick at Louisiana Tech on Halloween for a lead in the third quarter. And then he made three in overtime because the first two were negated by late timeouts and a heartbreaking loss for UAB where they appeared to have it won, but a controversial call involving Spencer Brown as he 
got to the goal line, but the referees, after a long delay, decided he had fumbled, and Louisiana Tech eventually pulled the upset. And that was, you talk about 42 days off, regardless win or loss, it's a long time to be down, but especially, you know, bad taste in their mouth after those two close losses that they felt like they should have won. Larry Wooden in the backfield behind Johnston. Johnson steps up. Over the middle, flag comes in, catch made at the 38-yard line. And flag thrown back towards the line of scrimmage. You wonder, with Tyler Johnson moving around, if this is going to be an offensive holding. You know, I would say UAB's penalties really has been what it has helped Rice out most in this game. Rice has made some nice plays, especially on that last drive, but you go back to the, the, inter, the, the interference on the punt return for Rice, roughing the passer, a holding there. The, the penalties have really killed UAB on both sides of the ball and special teams in this game to this point. Negates a catch from Myron Mitchell, which would have given UAB a first down. And now you really have one shot here to burn a timeout. Not a ton of time left with only 19 seconds. Still have a, a brief window here. Handed off, it's Wooden. Past the original line of scrimmage, wrestled down at the 46. And that's going to be the last play. A whistle blown with five seconds left. UAB will call time. Last timeout used by UAB and head coach Bill Clark. Which I'm surprised to see with, with where they're at on the field. I don't think Tyler Johnston has the arm to get this downfield for Hail Mary, so I'm surprised to see that timeout there. They could bring in Bryson Lucero. They brought him on at the end of the first half at Louisiana Tech, and they nearly had a Hail Mary. That was Garrett Prince, their tight end. It was judged out. Ball not in control right at the pylon from a similar distance back on Halloween in Ruston. Second down and eight from the 47. Second and eight from the 47. Still Johnston at quarterback. Johnston steps back. Over the middle, catch made. 25-yard line. Do they call timeout in time? Clock is at zero. Ball spotted at the 26. They used their last timeout before that play. So two things, it appears UAB still had a timeout left, number one. Number two, they're going to take a look and see, did he catch this, get to the ground, and they call that timeout before the clock ran out. You're right, I beg your pardon. I thought that was their third and final timeout used before that pass play. Well, they're coming out for the field goal as the referees look it over. Quinn, good from 45 yards in UAB's last game at Louisiana Tech on Halloween. The UAB other thing preparing it, to kick. The other thing at play here if they didn't have a first down, or if they didn't have a timeout left, what they're looking at is, did he complete the catch? Because UAB's coaching staff is screaming at their players to get lined up. I don't think they had a timeout left, and they're gonna mark this ball ready for play, and the moment they blow the whistle, UAB's gonna have to snap it, and there's gonna be one second left. Halftime in Houston, a back and forth second quarter, but a very impressive first half from the quarterback. 
Giovanni Johnson, 11 of 13, and a touchdown pass to Jordan Myers. Taylor McCard, your thoughts on the first 30 minutes? Yeah, impressed with Giovanni Johnson and his ability really in the second quarter to get the ball downfield in the passing game. I would imagine you see more of that in the second half. And again, for, for Rice, in these red zone trips, going to have to continue to convert those into touchdowns. For UAB, they found some magic in the second quarter. That, that first quarter, those three and outs, I think, killed them. And for UAB also, you got to clean up those penalties to have a chance in this game. The eyes of Conference USA on Houston. If Rice can beat UAB, UTSA is the Western Division champion. Halftime at Rice Stadium. Rice up six over UAB. At Smart Financial, we're about people, not profits. That's because we're locally operated by our member owners, and that makes all the difference. We are first-time home buyers. We are car buyers. We are dreamers. We are family. We are you. We are Smart Financial. No matter who you are or what you do, Smart Financial is here for you. As the fundraising arm of Rice Athletes, the Rice Owl Club supports our student athletes on their path to become the best in their sport, in the classroom and beyond the hedges. The Rice Owl Club supports our student athletes on their path to become the best in their sport, in the classroom and beyond the hedges. You can be the difference maker and help our owls soar by giving to the Owl Club Athletic Fund. Making a gift today provides the resources needed to create the true student athlete experience. Even now, while we're distancing, your body needs to move. At Houston Methodist Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, our teams are ready with advanced technology and imaging to deliver custom treatment plans safely. And our minimally invasive procedures can help you heal faster. We have the expertise to keep you moving because every movement matters. Find the care you need at locations throughout Houston. Houston Methodist, leading medicine. Elves pushed for something here on campus. I had seen news stories of active voter suppression that I thought would never exist in today's times, you know? And I didn't know what to do, so I, I googled the mayor's email. I emailed them saying, you know, I, I have some ideas. I think this would be a great way to help people, help them, you know, know how to vote for one thing and exercise their vote for another thing. I didn't expect the response, honestly. And then, they, like, they said, we commend you. Like, this is a great idea. They put me in touch with the mayor. We've had some dialogue and then we ended up in a meeting. But we had talked about how, you know, there's a competitive rivalry between Rice and U of H and then TSU. And we thought that we could use that, you know, motivate people to like out-compete out their fellow universities. And so by issuing a challenge between the universities, this would be a great way to increase voter turnout. So the first three weeks of early voting, we had over 13,000 voters cast their ballot here. And so that's really been a mix of students, faculty, staff, even alumni in the community have come by, or simply like you think if someone who like walks their dog here every weekend. And that's why our numbers are so high, is we've really been able to serve the community and including Rice students and everyone associated with them. Let me just say this, with all three of these campuses, more than 21,000 voted on their respective campuses. More than 21,000. And at Rice, over 13,000 Anna ballots were cast. And it is with uh, this impressive total that I hereby award Rice University the winner of the first mayor's early vote challenge. So Anna, on behalf of the entire city of Houston and all of the people who are counting on you all to make a difference. Let me present this, the Mayor Sylvester Turner Early Vote Challenge 2020 winner, Rice University. Thank you so much. I want to acknowledge uh, not only our students here at Rice who've done an incredible job of making it convenient, possible for folks to vote, but I also want to thank the students at the University of Houston and Texas Southern this was something, this is not a zero sum game. This is something in which we're all winners when people get out and vote. I think it really just shows how dedicated students are to this election and to doing their civic duty.
Welcome back. Halftime in Houston. Matt Peterson with former Rice Owl quarterback Taylor McCarg. 13-7. Rice leading UAB. A 26-yard touchdown completion from Giovanni Johnson to Jordan Myers towards the end of the first half was the difference. Taylor, dissect these stats. Yeah, I think Rice really found something in that second quarter in the passing game. Uh, ahead of that, they had not asked Giovanni Johnson really to do much in the pass game. You saw in that two-minute drive, a couple screens, continuing to get Jordan Myers involved in the pass game, and I think that was the biggest difference. And then also for UAB, their first quarter, those back-to-back those -back three and outs, I think killed them early. One long, nice, sustained drive. They're going to have to figure out a way to clean up penalties as well. I think that's been really key for them. Rice number two in the nation before today, 35 minutes, 40 seconds time of possession on average. They had 20 minutes, 12 seconds of the ball in that first half. And that's for UAB, right? You've got to capitalize on your possessions. You know you're just not going to get very many of them. It's a very similar brand of football to what the academies play, right? We're going to control the clock. We're not going to turn the football over, and we're going to play keep away. And if you can, Rice has had three possessions already where they, they were able to convert points clean game in terms of turnovers right no turnovers in the first half but for UAB you've got to figure out a way to answer and score points on your end and then get some quick stops from this Rice offense. Two field goals a punt and a touchdown for Rice on its four series now the highlights from the first half UAB seeking its third straight West Division title Rice playing for a bowl game and Johnson was smart with his decision making. He did a nice job on a couple of these plays early, extending with his legs. And like we talked about, as this first half went along, they let him expand in the passing game a little bit more. Jordan Myers featured a ton. Like we, we opened up the show, uh, opened up the broadcast, we knew he'd be involved. It's been nice to see Jake Bailey out there as well. We weren't sure if he was going to play. UAB able to capitalize. Nice stretch zone. They get the corner and score a touchdown here. For UAB, they on, on the other side, they missed a couple shot plays that they would love to have back. Expect UAB to drive the ball downfield against this young Rice secondary. Jordan Myers there with the 26-yard touchdown reception, the longest touchdown catch of his career. Second career touchdown, first since 2018. A lot on the line here. If Rice wins, UTSA is the Western Division champion. If UAB comes back, they're the West champion for the third straight year. The second half from Houston after the break. Welcome back. Nearing the start of the third quarter, Matt Peterson with Taylor McGard. No doubt a lot of Roadrunner fans and players and coaches watching this game from San Antonio because if Rice wins, UTSA is the Conference USA West Division champion. And it'd be a bit of a world reversal after seven years ago when UTSA helped out the Rice Owls. It's, it, you're exactly right. And it's funny that all three of these teams, UTSA, Rice, and UAB involved in 2013, Rice went on the road. We played UAB on a Thursday night and won and needed UTSA to go up and beat North Texas. Very similar fashion to what's happening today. UTSA was able to do that. We beat Tulane, ultimately ended up representing Conference USA West and, and won conference that year. So we, that 2013 team owed a lot of it to that UTSA squad. Now UNT held the tiebreaker having beaten the Owls in Denton. UTSA stopped the main green at the one-yard line for a 21-13 win to put the Owls back in the driver's seat. They clinched the West with the defeat of Tulane and went on to blast Marshall, claim their first CUSA football title. There's the kickoff, fair caught by Myers. Rice will open the third quarter with the ball beginning at the 25 yard line. And again for Rice, what they really found out in that second quarter was their productivity in this game has really come from the passing game. Running the ball between the tackles, haven't seen a ton of production. It'll be interesting to see Rice traditionally to this point in the season loves to feature that two tight end set, a lot of running between the tackles on first down. It'll be interesting to see if, the, if their answer now is we're going to get the ball downfield early in the game as opposed to that interior running game. Giovanni Johnson outstanding there in the first half, 11 of 13, 118 yards and a touchdown. Griffin in the backfield behind Jerry Johnson the third. Johnson blocking, Griffin wrapped up. Three tacklers there for UAB, including Antonio Moultrie. And there it is again, right out of the gate. UAB doing such a nice job. Disruption up front with their interior D-line. 
for Rice, that first down power run game has really not been there today. It'll be interesting to see, do you, do you figure out a way to mix it up, get the ball on the edge, incorporate some motion? What wrinkles do you have to try and get the run game more involved? Moultrie had a great interception on Halloween. Leap to bat down a pass, intercepted it in the third quarter at Louisiana Tech. Griffin's off to the left of Johnson. It's handed to Griffin. Up the middle, minimal gain. Third and long now for the Owls. Like we talked about in the first half, this is UAB loves in this third and medium, third and long scenario. They do so much with their front as an odd front, meaning three down front. A lot of times they'll get an, a bare front with a nose and two, three techniques. Or you'll see them, sometimes they'll have sort of a floating two interior defensive linemen and then bring a lot of pressure with their linebackers. We'll see what they if they dial up a blitz here or do they make Giovanni throw into a, you know, a drop eight coverage. Myers off to the right. Bailey and Mason off to the left. Griffin in the backfield. Johnson lobs it. It's Griffin. Had one blocker. Great coverage in the open field. Good job there by UAB rallying to the ball. They got beat on a couple screens in that two-minute drive for Rice before half. And for UAB, that's exactly what you need. A really nice job there by Grayson Cash. That's exactly what you need to get off the field for that first drive for them. Should have pretty decent field position here for their first drive of, of this second half for UAB's offense. Along with Cash, it was Noah Wilder there. A punt from Mendez. Bounces inside the 40. Rolls dead at the 37. Mendez punt. Stops at the 37. That's where Rice will down it. And that's where UAB will uh, Tyler over. Johnston First back onto the field for UAB. A back and forth first half. UAB seeking its third straight Conference USA West Division title. Two very difficult losses. Their last two games in October. They had leads in the second half of both but could not hold on. But the opportunity is right there for the Blazers. This program that restarted in 2017 along with Marshall and FAU tied for the most wins since 2017 in Conference USA. Johnston fakes the handoff. Big ball downfield. Caught at the 28-yard line behind everybody and into the end zone. It's Myron Mitchell on the first play. Huge play over the top to Myron Mitchell. This Rice secondary has been beat. That's three times now. Two of them UAB has, has converted, but this deep post over the top looks like they're not getting any safety help. That's a huge play to start this second half for UAB with an extra point added here. They will take the lead, and for, for Rice, you're going to have to figure out an answer in that back end to stop giving up these shot plays. They're doing a great job in the front seven containing everything, but these shot plays are killing the Rice defense right now. Quinn on for the point after touchdown. Mitchell with his third touchdown of the season. Uh, Shropshire, a long catch in the first half. Mitchell here in the second. The deep ball working so far today for Tyler Johnston. UAB back in front in Houston. Sixty-three yard touchdown pass from Tyler Johnston to Myron Mitchell. Mitchell was an honorable mention all conference USA player last year as a wide receiver and kick returner. For both of these offenses, really, especially for UAB, found something in the downfield passing game. And for UAB, they, like we talked about, two of these they've hit and a third got dropped over the middle of the field. Neither of these teams are running the ball particularly well. I wouldn't be surprised if you see both of these offenses really start to open up the playbook in the passing game. And this second half, we might have some excitement here coming our way. 22-yard return for Jordan Myers from the 6 to the 28. The depth on display today for UAB. Their best wide receiver, Austin Watkins, opted out earlier in the week. But Mitchell, who had a great season last year, honorable mention all CUSA with the catch. Shropshire 55 yard catch in the first half and then we're also seeing the surplus of running backs with Jermaine Brown, Lucius Stanley and Larry Wooden. Johnson back out of quarterback for Rice. Fakes the handoff to Griffin, Johnson. Good coverage, that was Mason the intended receiver. Excellent defense from TD Marshall. And I think 
Giovanni would love to have this one back. When you watch him get on the edge here, watch you see seven flash right in front of him. Jordan Myers is left alone. He tries to force this on the over route. This is every offense has this. You run a play action, you've got somebody in the flats, and you have a different tight end or receiver come on the over route. The over was covered. Jordan Myers was left open in the flat there. Probably should have checked that one down. Marshall had the big pick six last year to clinch the West Division title at North Texas last season. Johnson, empty backfields. Big ball down the right sideline. Double coverage. No flag. Incomplete. Surprised by this one. I, I would have I thought that you might see some sort of pass interference here. They go with the shot play, take a, a try to throw this post or, or deep ball down the field. You'll see here at the last second, UAB on defense, not looking back at the ball. I think you probably could have got away with, with throwing a, a flag there because the defender doesn't get his head back around. Normally that's where you see defensive PI. Didn't get it on that one. Kobe Campbell, a running back, was playing by receiver there, the intended receiver. Now third down and 10 for Rice. Johnson. Out to Myers. Myers fighting for a first down late flag, but he stepped out two yards shy. Flag comes in at the 21. Across the 35 to the 36. Now to bring up fourth down and two. And this looks like it's going against Rice. Might be holding here. Javon Wolford whistled for the hold. Rice leads the country, fewest penalties per game. And for Rice, not timely there, obviously, but it ultimately won't matter. Fourth and two, they're going to the punt the ball away. In the stadium, you watch on UAB's sideline right now. It feels like they've got all the momentum on their side. They're jumping around. You can hear the volume out of them. They're excited. On the Rice sideline right now, it's, it's a little flat. This second half, UAB's really come out swinging and really does have the momentum on their side right now. Mendez back to bunt, averaging 39 and a half yards per kick this year. Squib to the left. Myron Mitchell back to receive, and it's down at the 28-yard line. Well, pretty impressive from UAB. It was the conversation all week about how they would handle the COVID-19 tests and contact tracing just a few of the notable inactives today. Spencer Brown approaching 4,000 career yards, second in the country to Clemson's Derek Etienne, Dwayne McBride, Colby Raglan, an offensive lineman, Austin Watkins, who might play in the NFL. He opted out. Dijon Turner, Will Bowler, but as their social media account tweeted earlier, no excuses, play like a champion. That's right, and it's just like what we talked about with Coach Clark earlier this week. He said, look, we're going to be there. We have an opportunity to represent Conference USA West. We're going to be there. It doesn't matter who we have. We're going to play. We're going to play physical. And again, like we talked about, I would not be surprised if you see UAB start to take regular shots downfield against this Rice secondary. Johnston fakes the handoff. Out to the left. Incomplete. He was wide open, but that's Shropshire. Slightly underthrown there by Johnston. Yeah, it looked like Johnston didn't get his feet underneath him. This one didn't come out with, with much on it. But again, now that you've seen the, you know, Rice has had two hit over top of them. They've backed way off. And this, for, for Shropshire, he looks like he's running a go route and then drops off there. But would have loved to have that one completed if you're Tyler Johnston because he was wide open on that one. A lot of clean pockets today for Johnston. UAB, one of the best offensive lines in the conference. Only three sacks allowed. By UAB offense, Johnston back to pass. Fakes, rolls left, throws to a covered receiver incomplete. Couldn't tell there also if he had gone out of bounds first. It looked like Garrett Prince potentially went out of bounds before coming back in, so he might be fortunate he didn't ultimately catch this one. But Tyler Johnson, pretty accurate throw on the move. This sets up a third and long here. Huge play for both of these teams. Prince was the intended receiver, was a wide receiver at Butler Community College, converted to a tight end at UAB. Third and 10 from the 29. Lucius Stanley in the backfield behind Tyler Johnston. Flag comes out.
UAB acting like they called time, and they did. First time out of the second half for the UAB Blazers. UAB has struck first, the 63-yard touchdown pass from Tyler Johnston to Myron Mitchell. Big third down coming up when we come back to Rice Stadium. Third and 10 for UAB after the timeout. Johnston back to pass. It's a blitz from Wrights, dumped off to Lucius Stanley. He evades one tackle. He's past the 40, near midfield. Yards after the catch for Lucius Stanley, a first down for the Blazers. Really nice call there by UAB. They do just do a simple little slip screen here out to the back and used Rice's aggressiveness against them. Got their lineman downfield. Love the play call, the timing of it. You could tell Rice had their ears pinned back. They were coming after them. And now again, UAB with an opportunity at midfield, put points on the board, and that momentum continues for this offense. Naeem Smith was the first one there. He had the opportunity for the ankle tackle. Pittman put in motion. Stanley remains in the backfield. Fake to Stanley. Over the top. Deep ball. Flag comes in incomplete. They've had it all day today. Again, it was... Trey Shropshire, the intended receiver. Yeah, I think you're going to get illegal contact here in the back end for Rice. And like we talked about, they have had it all day. I would not expect UAB to stop throwing the ball downfield like they are because they do have it. He was open again there. Andrew Bird called for the holds. First down, UAB at the Rice 41. Tyler Johnston, an outstanding high school career. Spanish Ford High School, 35-0 as a starter. Two state championships. Handed off, and that's snuffed out by Rice. It was Brown with the carry, and he was met by DeBraylin Carroll. And DeBraylin Carroll, it's a couple times now that we've called his name being really disruptive, shedding his block. When you see this, this zone running game, any sort of penetration up the field kills the momentum of those type of plays. Nice job by DeBraylin Carroll there. Miles McCord contributed to the tackle. Carroll a sack last week. Second and 11 for UAB. Play action. Big ball downfield. McCord in coverage. It's caught. Touchdown. Samario so Rudolph. This is, a, this is a great catch by Samario so Rudolph. Body control here. This is not bad coverage here on the back end by Miles McCord. Really nice play there by Samario Rudolph. And again, can't say enough. This UAB offense has really found something in the downfield passing game against this depleted Rice secondary. And they're taking advantage of it in a big way right now. Samario Rudolph had the big drop earlier in the game on a much easier catch. That time a 42-yard touchdown catch, his first of the season for the redshirt freshman. Another big ball thrown by Tyler Johnston. Matt Quinn on for the point after touchdown. It's up and good. It's an eight-point lead for UAB. Well, what has changed now Taylor from last week at Marshall to today where UAB is having a great day throwing the ball. Well, this UAB offensive front, this is a top five unit in the country in terms of sacks given up. They don't give up a lot of pressure. And the difference is this Rice defense last week got people around Grant Wells, Marshall's quarterback, and made him play like a freshman. They, they forced a couple turnovers, and as the game went on, Grant Wells forced the ball more and more as the game went on, ultimately ending up with those, those five interceptions. Right now in this game, you're seeing the exact opposite. Tyler Johnson looks comfortable. The offensive line's playing well as a unit. Rice really is not getting pressure, and that's something that they've focused on. They've done such a good job through most of the season is getting pressure with four or five, and you're not seeing it where – UAB is running their base play action and taking these. A lot of these are really only like two route concepts. It's not like they're, it's a full downfield passing game. It's just two routes, taking a shot, and they're hitting them right now. 
Kobe Neenan with the kickoff into the end zone. Rice will start at the 25. And a big difference from last week to this in terms of experience of the quarterback. Johnston started five games as a redshirt freshman two years ago, including four of the last five, including the three UAB championship clinching games against Southern Miss, Middle Tennessee, and Northern Illinois, plus the bowl win. So he's done it before as a redshirt freshman, now two years later trying to get UAB back to the Conference USA title game. He does. He has that veteran presence, and you're seeing that right now. And, and then on the other side for Rice, these first two drives coming out of the gate have not they've been fairly underwhelming in the play calling. They're going to have to put their trust in Giovanni Johnson if they want to keep up in this game. Johnson under center. Larry Johnson the third is the fullback. Griffin is the running back. Hands it off to Griffin. No gain. And Rice continues with that first down interior run game, sticking to who they are. At some point, though, you got to wonder what does play calling look like? How do you incorporate some wrinkles to try and give UAB a different look? Because right now, it's very simple, right? In UAB's interior D-line is just winning against, against Rice's offensive line right now in the run game. Johnson gets the play call. Bailey and Bradley and Myers out to the right. Mason and Kobe Campbell off to the left. Flag thrown. False start against Rice. False start. Offense number 16. Five yard penalty. Remains second down. Yeah, Andrew Mason there with the false start. Freshman mistake backing you up again. For Rice, got to figure out a way to manufacture some momentum. Who are your playmakers that you trust to get the ball to? Look for Jordan Myers here. Look for Jake Bailey. You got to figure out a shot play, right? Running between the tackles, there's been very little success there to this point in the game. And this is where Giovanni Johnson is going to have to grow up a little bit and play a above a freshman. Griffin off to the right of Giovanni Johnson. Johnson over the middle, caught. Short gain. It's Bailey with the catch. Wrapped up by Jermaine Brown. Like that Bronte Harris. And now a third and 11. Talked about it earlier. UAB, they've gotten some hits on Giovanni Johnson. They've gotten some pressures on him. No, Not you know a lot of sacks to this point in the game. But I would expect to see some sort of pressure package. How do you figure out a way to get Chris Mall involved, Noah Wilder, get pressure on Giovanni Johnson, trying to get him to, to force a mistake here. Broussard in the backfield for pass blocking. Fake of a handoff. Johnson flushed out. Ankle tackled. He's down. Christopher Mull with the tackle for loss. And Chris Mull, that's one of the leaders on this defense. 47 tackles on the year, one sack, three tackles for loss. You can go on and on about this guy and his, his effort. When you turn on the tape, he's sideline to sidelines. He really is, he is their version of Blaze Aldridge, in, in both just as a competitor and who he is to the, the team as a unit and a leader. For UAB, again, momentum is, is clearly on their side. Uh, some confusion there as the return man, Myron Mitchell, was talking with the officials as the punt from Mendez was delivered. Rice punted only once in the first half. This will be their third punt of the third quarter. Another punt opportunity here for Charlie Mendez. Did not become a punter till a senior at high school. Redshirt freshman from Van Nuys, California, Harvard Westlake High School. The punt from the six. And it takes a very fortuitous rice roll inside the three, let go by Myron Mitchell. Now the rice defense must make a play. 
thinks UAB back inside the 25. UAB has grabbed control here in the third quarter. Blazers up by eight, eyeing their third straight Conference USA West Division title. USA West standings entry play today. UTSA hoping for a rice victory. UAB can clinch their vision with the win today. First down for UAB. Johnston hands it off. Good ankle tackle in the backfield from Blaze Aldridge as he wrapped up Larry Wooden. Yeah, and that's the start you need if you're this Rice defense. Try to get on the other side of the sticks for second and third and long. Wanted to go back. You talk about this graphic and where UAB is in the standings and how impressive it is with what Bill Clark and his staff have done. He had opportunities to leave when they shut the program down for that brief period. But what he and his staff have built and, and how competitive they have been year over year the last three years, three, four years, it's been so impressive what this UAB squad has been able to accomplish. Second and 11 for UAB. Johnston fakes the handoff. Steps up, has some space up to the 35-yard line, made Garrett Grammer miss. And Rice in the back end was not letting anybody get behind them on that one. And I would imagine you're going to see a little bit more of that with these shot plays that UAB has been able to hit. Don't be surprised if you see less of that man defense and these DBs closer to the line of scrimmage. Expect more safety help and off coverage. There's going to be some run lanes that open up as this game goes along. Our Kenneth Orgy, the junior from Missouri City, being looked at by the head athletic trainer, Brad Kimball. And, you know, we had our conversation this week with the coaching staff and SID Chuck Poole about this season. And they raved about the training staff. Nobody gets an off day in the training room. Even when the team has an off day, the training staff has to be there. Now, credit to Brad Kimball, Sarah Shadroff, and Deanna. So Henny and a large staff beyond them for keeping these players healthy during a very challenging year. It's really unbelievable, and this is across the board. It goes beyond you know, their normal duties of, of trying to keep these kids healthy. And, and with COVID, there are so many protocols that are in place now. These kids, you don't realize when you go play college football, you spend the majority of your time with the training staff and the strength staff. You get to know those people better than any other people in the building. And hats off to the medical staffs across the country who have had very little time off since this season has begun. Kenneth Orgy helped off. It's handed off to Wooden. A short gain for Wooden. And he didn't make the tackle there, but was disruptive in the backfield again to Braylon Carroll. We've called his name quite a bit in this game. When you go back and turn on the tape, you're going to see him all over the place. Really disruptive. He's had a nice game. For Rice, they're going to have to figure out a way to get some pressure on Tyler Johnston. Right now, he's too, he's too comfortable taken shots downfield, has had a couple opportunities to scramble. They've got to figure out a way to get him on the ground if they want to have a chance here. Second down, handed off. Lucius Stanley waiting for a hole, never really formed. Good run tackling from Rice. To Stanley. Is the ball carrier. He picks up two yards. That was Carroll making another tackle. We usually see Carroll between the tackles, but he's really going sideline to sideline today. Well, they're all having to go sideline to sideline today because of the nature of UAB's run game. It's very little, very rarely does UAB run right at you. A lot of times it's that zone run scheme we've talked about where you've got to be able to run sideline to sideline against this team. Third and five, Stanley in the backfield. It's Johnston with a clean pocket, low throw, incomplete. Intended receiver Samario Rudolph, Bird with the coverage for Rice. Yeah, Rice is lucky on that one. Open again, and I can't say enough, compliment this UAB offensive line again. Their blitz pickup has been fantastic. Rice shows a late pressure. They run a little bit of a stunt up front, and UAB picks it up with no issues. Tyler Johnson's able to step up in the pocket, deliver what should have been a little better ball. I think he'd love to have that one back. Rice got lucky there. Have to capitalize on this. Greenwell punts from the 29-yard line. It's Myers back to receive. He lets it go into the end zone. A yeah, veteran play there by, by Jordan Myers. You see this a lot now where guys fake as though they're going to catch the ball. It sails over their head. Rice fortunate there that that did not check up. Otherwise, they would have been pinned deep. But we go back to what wrinkles does Rice going to have 
to keep up in this game and, and get some momentum back. The first down interior run game that Rice loves to hang its hat on, UAB has really stymied that. There hasn't been any production to this point in the game with that style of running into the teeth of this UAB defense. We'll see as they come out in shotgun to open this series, what do they, do they mix up play calling here? Do they get the ball downfield, incorporate some motion? What do they come out with? Rice led 13-7 at halftime. Two straight touchdowns for UAB in the third quarter. Now Johnson out to Myers. It's his eighth catch, and he's near a first down at the 30-yard line. And a, a generous spot there gets him the first down. Jordan Myers in the flat. It's a This is a simple, it almost looks like a pick right there, but... They're going to have to figure out, keep Jordan Myers engaged in this game because on offense, I would say he's, he's been your offensive MVP to this point in the game. Seven catches in the first half for Myers, including the 26-yard touchdown. First down, Rice. Broussards to the left of Johnson from the shotgun. Johnson steps up. Knocked down at the 32. Johnson with the keeper. Looking to go quick game there, and a good job again by UAB secondary. Nothing downfield, and Giovanni trying to make something happen with his feet. I like that he's sliding on this one early in the game, took a shot. As a freshman, he's got a lot of football left ahead of him. You, don't, you want to try and avoid those, those collisions. A new career high for Jordan Myers. Nine receptions, one more than the eight he had at North Texas in October. Under four minutes left in the third quarter. Empty backfield for Giovanni Johnson. Flag comes in. Johnson, a nice pickup. Past the first down marker into UAB territory, but two Johnson flags the in the backfield the for Rice. Yeah, I think we're going to get offsetting penalties here. It looked like Line defensive up. offsides to start, and I think you're going to get a hold out of one of the offensive linemen for Rice. Whatever the call. That's Wolford again. And I think we, uh, some miscommunication here by the <laughs> officials. We're, we're forgetting about another flag at the bottom of the screen. There are two fouls on the play. Holding offense number 70. Offside defense number 37. Those fouls all set. The second down. You could be out there if you wanted to be. I think being an official has got to be one of the hardest things. These guys, they don't miss very often, but when they do, it's exposed, and that is a, that is a difficult job. I do not envy them. Second and long here, get something back if you're Rice. Pick up some sort of yardage. Third and long to this point has not been a, a fruitful endeavor, if you will, for this Rice offense to this point in the game. Bailey Myers and Bradley off to the right. Empty backfield for Johnson. Johnson on second down, flag comes in. False start. And early in this game, early in this game, the first half, UAB penalized six times, some really bad penalties that extended drives and helped out Rice quite a bit. You're seeing the other side now. You're seeing some youth come out from Rice, especially in the skill positions. We've seen a couple false starts out of the wide receivers, which is one of the most frustrating things because it's very simple for you to just watch the ball. There's never a need to jump off sides. Rice has got to stop shooting themselves in the foot to climb back in this game. That was Kobe Campbell offside, or a false start, I should say. Broussard off the right hip of Johnson. Fake of a handoff. Pressured. Johnson goes down. And that's man free, bringing the rest. Everybody else is coming. They're going to start to bring some pressure on Giovanni Johnson and make them, force them to throw the ball downfield. Go back to there's a couple different games throughout the year that defenses have, this has been the answer. They do the, have done the exact same thing to Rice and said, we're going to put a bunch of people around the line of scrimmage. We're not going to let you run right at us. You're going to have to beat us throwing the ball down the field. For UAB there, another nice job getting after the quarterback and getting a sack there. Nakia Eason. Got to Johnson. Another flag comes out. Only two scholarship receivers available today for Rice. Offense number 11, 
And that one goes against one of those scholarship receivers, Jake Bailey. This is really uncharacteristic. The least penalized team in America having real struggles here in the third quarter. And false starts are, of all of the penalties, false starts are the ones that you feel like you should be able to control the most. There, there's, there's never an excuse for it. It's, it's very frustrating, and there's been several of them today out of this Rice offense. Third and 21, Johnson out to Bailey. And they were expecting that sort of play, tackled at the 20-yard line. UAB's really put the clamps down on this Rice offense. Give them a lot of credit. They've answered the bell in this second half. And UAB, that was the strength coming in. We knew, we listed off some of the accolades early in the game. They're fantastic in pass yards allowed per game. Overall, total defense. That's where they, their, a lot of their success starts on the defensive side of the ball, as it does for Rice. And they've done a really nice job shutting down Rice in this second half. Fourth punt of the third quarter for Mendez. Fair caught at the 43-yard line by Myron Mitchell. Four series for Rice. Remember, they had the ball and all the momentum coming out of the break, it was 13-7. Rice got the ball to start the third quarter, but that's four straight punts and negative yardage overall for Rice on offense in the third quarter. Yeah, halftime reactions, halftime adjustments from UAB, that's been the key. Rice has come out and looked the same as they did in the first half, and UAB has answered. They've said, you know, we're not, really, we're not going to let you run the ball on us at all. You're going to have to get the ball downfield. And for Jordan Myers, they're going to have to figure out a way to get him more involved. Huge opportunity for UAB here to really build on that momentum and make this a two-score lead. Tyler Johnston back at quarterback. Hands it off up the middle. Jermaine Brown picks up four. Number one, Jermaine Brown, Jr., the ball carrier. Blaze Aldridge, one of the first ones there for Rice. Aldridge with the tackle, Johnston, 7 of 13, 214 yards plus two long touchdowns. If, you're, if your seven completions get you 214 yards through the air, you're giving up, <laughs> I think it's probably too simplistic to say the back end for Rice is giving up too many big plays. I, and again, I would expect to see more of these shot plays as the game goes along. Brown still in the backfield, option flipped out to Brown. A nice pursuit. Kirk Lockhart had four tackles in the first half. He pushes him out. And that has been it for, for the Rice defense. Their effort has been, you know, especially in the run game, chasing sideline to sideline, this stretch zone concept that we've talked about. I know that one was an option play, but UAB's run game forces you to have great effort and rally to the ball, and I think Rice has done a nice job of that in the run game today. Third and four. Mitchell comes on late for UAB. He's off to the right in the slot. Johnston, under pressure, has a wide open man. Did he get the first down? He stepped out just before it. Some That's argument from the UAB sideline. Catch. catch was made by Brown, the running back. Now they say he's short. Another one that Tyler Johnston, I, I think, would love to have back and put that on the front shoulder. Now, I know there was some pressure on him, but if this ball is on the front shoulder, the, uh, he might score. And this will be just short. It looks like UAB's offense is going to stay on the field. Looks like we'll have a, a short fourth down opportunity for them after the break. UAB dominates the third quarter. Two long touchdowns. One to Samario Rudolph for 42 yards. And one to Myron Mitchell for 63 yards. UAB up eight after three quarters in Houston. We start the fourth quarter. Fourth down and two. UAB with another lead in the fourth quarter. We'll see if they can hold on to it here at Rice Stadium. Up eight as we start the fourth. And on fourth down, this will be another close spot, and it looks like they are short. The Rice defense stands tall to start the fourth quarter. Yeah, that looks good for Rice. We talk about strength versus strength on for, the, for UAB and Rice on their defensive front seven. They've played so well, and for Rice, that's exactly what you got right there. Disruption up front. Such a nice job by this defensive unit. The physicality really on both sides of the ball has been so impressive. Rice with a huge stop there to get back in the game, and we showed the graphic coming out of break. UAB, I know it's been a long time since they played 42 days since their last game, but the loss at home against Louisiana Lafayette and then on the road at Louisiana Tech, second half leads in both of those games that were given up. So 
this is something Coach Clark talked about. Look, we've got to close out these games. Rice with an opportunity to claw back into this with good field position to start the fourth quarter. It was Wooden, the ball carrier, another tackle for Kirk Lockhart, who's had a game for Rice on defense and special teams. Johnson from the shotgun. Broussard in the backfield. Johnson with the draw over midfield. Picks up three and a half. Johnson on the keeper picks up four. And Giovanni, again, for the running game for Rice, a lot of it of the production has really come from Giovanni, and they've stuck with the draw play. We've talked about UAB doesn't traditionally give up a lot of plays with mobile quarterbacks, but a nice job by Giovanni picking up po positive yardage there. That tackle on fourth down, the sixth today for Kirk Lockhart. He and Trayson Chamberlain lead Rice with six each. Broussard still in the backfield next to Johnson. Hand it off to Broussard. He'll barrel forward. Sets up third and two. And those are the little wrinkles we talk about. Get a jet sweep motion involved. Threaten the outside even if you stay inside. UAB to this point in the game, they've just, we talk about the two tight end power running game hasn't been effective. If you're a Rice fan, you got to appreciate a little bit of the, the creativity there. Third and short here. You got to imagine you're in four down territory if you're this Rice offense. Pick up some sort of positive momentum on this third down. Broussard, 19 carries, 62 yards, most of those in the second half, and the win at Marshall. Third and two for Rice. Myers on the top side with Mason. Johnson under pressure, low throw intended for Bailey, incomplete. It almost looked like a little miscommunication there. Giovanni Johnson is lucky that this ball was thrown low because if if this if it's not, TD Marshall might have had a TD going the opposite direction because he was in perfect position to catch that interception. Fourth and short here. Offense is staying on the field. Huge play in this game for both sides. Bradley comes in. Broussard off to the left of Johnson. Myers in the near side slot. Johnson over the middle. First down for Bailey. Past the 30. Out of bounds at the 24. First down conversion on fourth down for the Owls. Yeah, fourth and short, and UAB gives them man defense. So what do you do when you're getting man defense? You run man beaters, and a lot of that shallow crossers, a lot of that switch concepts. A nice call there on fourth down. Rice has gotten man coverage all year. Nice for them, nice to see them come back with a man beater concept and a nice play there by Jake Bailey. Broussard remains in the backfield. Jerry Johnson, the third, the fullback in front of him. Johnson back to Broussard, up the middle. Nowhere to go. Tony Fair started. again with the tackle. Loses a yard on the play. It almost feels like when Rice comes out in two tight end set, run right at you, that that's when you see the most effort out of UAB's interior D-line. It feels like they know exactly what's coming at them, and they can't wait to have the ball run right at them because they're shedding blocks, they're making tackles in the backfield. UAB has had answers to Rice's interior run game all game. Tony Farah, big body, 6'3", 335 pounds out of South Bend, Indiana. Myers in motion. Johnson looked that way, he'll go up the middle. Decent pickup on second down. Now third and long for the Owls. You don't imagine that even if Rice were to be held here that they would kick a field goal just by they're down eight. You don't know how many possessions you're really going to get left in this game. Third and nine, third and eight. Pick up some sort of, again, make sure that you get something here. Don't let this be a, a fourth and eight situation. Bailey and Myers out to the left. Broussard in the backfield to the right of Giovanni Johnson. Third down for the Owls. Over the middle, slightly overthrown, intended for Bailey. This is incomplete, intended for 11 Bailey. Fourth down. Yeah, just a little inaccurate here. And they run again. It'll go to a bunch formation, try to get Bailey again on a, on a crosser. 
And when it's fourth and eight, that, that's such a, a tough position to be in as a play caller. They are going to bring Colin Riccatelli out for a field goal opportunity. You just wonder how many more opportunities are you really, really going to have in the red zone against this UAB team. Devodrick Bynum with the coverage on that fourth, third down play. Now it's Riccatelli on for a 40-yard field goal. Low snap. Riccatelli's kick is up. And good. And the kick is good. Third field goal today, the second from 40 yards for Colin Riccatelli. Rice within five. Blazers with a five-point lead in Houston. I and its third consecutive West Division title. Under 12 minutes left in Houston. Five-point game in Houston. Giovanni Johnson leading his team down the field. A 30-yard drive. This was the key play to Jake Bailey. Broussard getting into it. But that defensive line for Auburn's been so good. It's another field goal for Rice. Yeah, UAB, again, we've talked about it all game. Their interior D-line has been so impressive. And really on both sides of the ball. Go back to UAB's offensive line throughout this game. Not letting Tyler Johnson really get hit at all. And it's just been, for both sides, can't say enough about the physicality of both of the units for UAB. That was important, I think, for momentum for Rice to get some points there. I understand why Coach Bloomgren ultimately decided to kick, but now you're still down. You've got to have to score a touchdown on your next, ideally, your next possession. Uh, not a ton of time left, and UAB has shown in this second half they're dangerous when they get the ball down the field. Riccatelli with the kickoff. Fair caught at the four-yard line by Jermaine Brown. Rice today, 32 rushing attempts for 62 yards, less than two yards per carry. Just not like what you would expect, but we talked about this earlier. Rice came into this season saying, you know, we're going to be this physical run right at you offense, and most of their production, most of the points scored, explosive plays, have come in the passing game. And to this point in, in this game specifically, I think they've just lost the battle up front in the run game and would imagine, again, when they get the ball back, probably going to see your, your shot plays again come in the passing game. Johnston back in at quarterback. Play action. Another big ball over the top, and... Incomplete, nearly intercepted, double coverage there. It was Bird with help from Treshawn Chamberlain. That was a great play by by Andrew Bird. Times it up, times it up really well. High points the ball and, and gets in there for deflection. And that's what, as a defense, you got to have a play like that to show UAB. Okay, we can defend these posts over the top that they've hit a few of in this game. Closest Rice has come to a defensive interception today. They had five last week at Marshall. Treshawn Chamberlain has been everywhere in that Sam or Viper linebacker position. Sometimes you'll see him as a linebacker. Sometimes he's the last man back. Second and 10 for Johnston and UAB. Johnston overthrows it. Bird in coverage. It was Shropshire, the intended receiver. Yeah, I thought Trey Shropshire was open there, and that's another one I think Tyler Johnson would love to have back. Was a little bit of pressure. You know, Trey Schumann in getting a little bit of pressure. They still haven't gotten to Tyler Johnson the way that you certainly go back and watch Rice from last week against Marshall. Did such a nice job in that game. Credit UAB's offensive line not giving up sacks in this one. Third and long huge play for really both of these teams. Pittman put in motion. It's Johnston. Rice showing blitz. They do blitz. Flipped out. Schumann Missed the tackle, back to the line of scrimmage. Fourth down for UAB. Bird got there for the tackle. And, and he didn't make the tackle, but credit Trey Schumann flying into the flats. We talk about playing sideline to sideline. Trey Schumann sniffs this out, doesn't make the tackle, but slows down the ball carrier enough, Jermaine, or the receiver enough, Jermaine Brown, to where everybody else rallies to him. A nice three and out there for this Rice defense. That's exactly what they needed with an opportunity, likely here with a, with a short field coming up. Kyle Greenwell standing at the 10. Jordan Myers back at the 35 to receive. Myers backpedaling. Fair catch made at the 26-yard line. Rice defense does its job. And now 10-15 left for Giovanni Johnson and the Rice offense. Again, missing Mike Collins, the starting quarterback. Austin Trammell, the leading receiver. And Juma Odoviano, the leading running back, but both teams dealing with absences here as we play football in December. They are. Both squads are, are dealing with, between injuries and, and COVID cases, they're dealing with a, a lighter squad than you would normally imagine. 
But for Rice, you got to call out your starting quarterback that with you know ten touchdowns, one interception, he's not in. Austin Trammell, le- you know, leader on this on this offense, he's not in. So having to manufacture ways to get the ball downfield for Rice with only two scholarship receivers that are out there right now. Broussard in the backfield with Johnson. Hands it off to Broussard on first down. He goes off right tackle. Barrels forward for a pickup of three. And just something as simple as uh, that's a, a simple zone scheme. They, they do pull a guard around there. Just getting out of shotgun makes that scheme, I feel like, a little bit easier for this Rice offense and getting the ball, you know, three yards. Well, you take that over what has been in the interior run game out of the, the power eye to this point in the game. That was Isaiah Floyd, the lead blocker, got his first start last week. He laid the leather that time in front of Broussard. Johnson, quick throw to Myers. It was behind him. Just got to let your receiver get their head around. Jordan Myers is, is getting his feet planted, turning around, and the ball is going by his head. Giovanni Johnson's just got to be a little more patient with that throw. Third and long here. Again, talk about UAB's pressure packages. Would imagine they come after Giovanni Johnson here. Third down, seven to go for Rice. Critical play here in the fourth quarter. Broussard in the backfield with Johnson. Myers in motion. They come with three. He steps up. He'll run for it. And he's right near the first down marker. Tough running from the redshirt freshman, Giovanni Johnson. Such a nice play by him. And, and unfortunately, it looks like Giovanni Johnson is down here. You hope that he's okay. First down and 10. Injured player on the field. Johnson attended to after that first down run. Training staff for Rice looking at him. Rice on the move, but Johnson receiving treatment under 10 minutes left in Houston. Five point lead for UAB. Helped off the field. Wiley Green in at quarterback. The redshirt sophomore made seven starts last season. He's under center for first down. Green, big ball. Out to Bailey, and there's a flag. There's three flags. <laughs> Anytime you see him fly in like that, I, I don't imagine uh, they're going to overturn this one. But hope you hope that Giovanni Johnson is okay. He's a dynamic player, and I know you, know, you talk to kids on the team. They love him as a teammate. And we'll talk about Wiley Green here in a moment. But you talk about at the quarterback position and a lot of the, the, these positions for Rice over the past couple of years, they've had so many guys get meaningful snaps. And so for your third string quarterback to be able to step in, he's had seven games last season, played quite a bit of snaps. You got to feel good about you probably aren't limiting much of the playbook here with Wiley Green. And a tough spot for him to step in. It, and this is You talk about meaningful snaps. This is really important snaps here down the stretch for him. From Coppell, Texas, Prestonwood Christian High School. Mason in motion, handed off to Broussard. He shifts right and left. He's up to midfield, a pickup of three. Broussard on the carry, picks up three. Uh, six foot three, uh, dealt with a, a shoulder injury his freshman year. Had a lone moment, I would say, at UTSA where he had a fumble on a critical moment and threw a pick six coming out of the locker room. UTSA won that game. But now an opportunity on senior day. Rice trying to get to a bowl this season. He's trying to lead them down the field for a go-ahead touchdown. Green flushed out. Throws it behind Bailey, third and seven coming up. And he'd like to have that one back. Rolling right, normally when you're, you're throwing to your, your dominant side, it's the easier side for you to throw to. And he's got Jake Bailey open in the flats, just puts it behind him. So third down and long here. What do you come up with? Try and UAB's shown pressure a couple different times there. Do they blitz? Uh, you got to imagine with your third string quarterback in the game, UAB's going to try and come after him. TD Marshall with the coverage of Bailey on the incompletion. Third down, seven to go for midfield from Wiley Green from the shotgun. 
Green steps up. He picks up four. Brought down, it's Christopher Mole once again. Gets to the 46. In decision time here for Coach Mike Bloomgren, if you punt the ball, you're pinning UAB deep, and it does look like that's what they're going to do. Try and play the field position game. Likely, you know, maybe two more possessions left in this game with eight minutes on the clock. It may, you may just get one, depending on what happens with this UAB drive coming up. Mendez from the 40, waiting to punt. Myron Mitchell back to receive, lets it bounce, and it's covered up by Kobe Campbell. Campbell gets downfield, downs it inside the two. Huge play by the Rice special team. Some of these punts early in the game by Charlie Mendez didn't get the rollout that I know that he would hope for. That one pins it deep. Really nice job by the coverage team to get down there. UAB is going to start this drive, and it looks like their three-yard line got a long way to go. Excellent punt from Mendez, who has become a weapon. They used the fake punt at Marshall last week. Led to a pass interference after a long review. So much riding on this for UAB, for Rice, for UTSA in the entire Conference USA West Division. It's Tyler Johnston from his own end zone. Some movement before the snap. Hayden Pittman moved. Rice, five takeaways at Marshall, none so far today. This is territory where Rice is hoping for what? Aldred showing blitz. Handed off, it's Lucius Stanley. Arm tackled. At the second level there by Trey Schumann. Gets to the five, pick up four yards on that play. Training staff on the field. Check that injured player on the field. And it's Schumann who made the tackle. And, and that, would, that would be a huge loss for this defense. Trey Schumann means so much to this team. You saw earlier in the game on the last drive, he chases down a screen play. He's, he's another one of those sideline to sideline great effort guys. You hope that he's okay and comes back in this game. For Rice's defense here, got them pinned deep. A three and out is ideal. You're likely going to get the ball back around midfield with a, with a short field. Plenty of time to work with still. But for Rice's defense, this is the biggest moment of the game for them. Stanley in the backfield behind Tyler Johnston. Pittman goes in motion. Hands it off to Stanley. Stanley trying to turn the corner. Pushed out short of the first down marker. Bird was out there along with Treshawn Chamberlain. Good job blocking on the perimeter there by UAB. That's part of what has been one of the things that, you know, reason they haven't run the ball particularly well as we see Giovanni Johnson, unfortunately, on, on the crutches. It's never a good sign. Uh, you obviously won't speculate on what it is or, or uh, how long he may or may not be out, but we wish the best to him and hope that he's back soon. Huge moment here, third and third and short. This is a, a major moment here for this Rice defense. Cameron Valentin comes in a defensive tackle. Third and two for UAB. Johnston will keep it himself, and he has a first down. He got past DeBraylin Carroll. DeBraylin Carroll again in the backfield. Tyler Johnson with a great cut, moves to his left, picks up this first down, and that was an all-effort play. It looked like DeBraylin Carroll might have blown that up in the backfield, but really a nice vertical a cut and a vertical movement there from Tyler Johnson to pick up that first down. Clock ticking, 6.25 left fourth quarter. Three out to the left for Johnston. Wooden off to his right. He'll keep it again, and he has another first down. Tackled by Bird at the 48-yard line. And I think that shows you know, the veteran presence that a Tyler Johnston brings to the game. These moments the, the, the matter the most, right, where you gotta, you're putting the ball 
in his hands because you trust him, letting him run the ball to try and, you know, Conference USA West on the line, right? They want to make sure, ideally, they would love to have a another 70 yards here to work with, and they don't give the the Rice offense a chance to have the ball back. But they're going to keep it in Tyler Johnston's hands, I would imagine. Only three carries all season before today for negative three yards. Johnston will roll left. Elijah Garcia with the first contact. He'll spin past the 31. Four more yards for Tyler Johnston. And these are tough runs by him. It's not like this is just set up and it's all blocking downfield and he's just got to you know, run straight ahead. You've seen a couple different cuts, a spin move there. I think they may have found something here in, in run game specific for him as he picks up another four yards there. Second down seven. They're spreading it out with three left, one right. Again, it's Pittman in motion. Johnston hands it off. Jermaine Brown. Good coverage on the outside by the Owls. Third down for UAB. There's a nice job by Naeem Smith there. Free safety number three. Shedding a block. We talk about getting to the sideline. When you run a stretch zone play like that to the boundary, it's all about shedding your block and rallying quickly because you can blow that play up and get a, a tackle for loss. Blaze Aldridge down on the far side of the field. His roommate, Naeem Smith, checking into him as the training staff comes on. And this is another one for Rice. You talk about one of the guys with Trammell being out. It feels like they're being hit. Rice is being hit not only with you know the injuries, but it's at the most key positions. First Giovanni Johnson, then Trey Schumann. Now Blaze Aldridge being helped up. UAB trying to kill the clock. Rice needs a stop. Under five minutes left, a five-point lead for UAB in Houston. Dedicated to people, passion, and purpose, Smart Financial originated in 1984. Blaze Aldridge went to the sideline after that stop. Owls want some noise from the crowd here on senior day. Third and five from the 32 for UAB. Tyler Johnston from the shotgun. He's carried it himself most of this drive. Movement up front, that will back up the Blazers. Matthew Trahern, the junior. And UAB in the second half feels like they got past those penalty woes that they had in the first half. And that one, you talk about biting you. The, the call sheet for an offensive coordinator at third and medium is so much better than third and ten. There are not very many plays. You go to your quarterback and say, hey, what do you feel good about on third and ten? There's just not many plays. That, that's a bigger penalty than you might realize. It's Wooden in the backfield behind Tyler Johnston. Third down, 10 to go for UAB with 4.29 left here in the fourth. Johnston under pressure. Big ball downfield, overthrown. UAB wants a flag. None thrown. Rice blitzed on third down, and it was effective. It was effective. It was one of the few times that Rice has really gotten after Tyler Johnston in the past game. And again, with the injuries for this Rice team, it looks like that's DeBraylin Carroll down on the ground who's been so disruptive and had such a good game for this Rice defensive unit. You can't, I mean, you talk about Giovanni Johnson's down, Blaze Aldridge is down, DeBraylin Carroll down now. Come into the game, you know, Mike Collins is out, Austin Trammell. These Owls are, you know, they're, they're battling. And we talked about, you know, UAB's got plenty of guys out as well, but it is so difficult in these key moments when your your veteran leadership is out like it, like we're seeing with this Rice unit right now. DeBraylin Carroll out of Duncanville High School lost the state title game a couple years ago. They had a practice at North Texas at Jerry's Worlds before the North Texas game, and he stood in the corner where the Hail Mary ended the state championship game, and... Just a moment of closure, it seemed like, for Carroll. But just tons of praise from his teammates. We spoke with Elijah Garcia, Blaze Aldridge this week, host Bloomgren raving about Carroll and his work ethic. Fourth and 10. 
Greenwell back to punt. Jordan Myers waiting for it at the 34 yard line of Rice. They're caught at the 36 by Myers. Rice with 4.15 to work with. And the third string quarterback, Wiley Green, with an opportunity. Talk about having to step up for your team, right? Last game of the season, opportunity on the line for a bowl appearance for this Rice team. If you're Wiley Green, this has got to be, you know, you prep like the starter all week when you're the backup. And I'm sure at different points in the year, he wasn't sure if he was going to make an appearance this season with Mike Collins being ahead of him and, and Giovanni Johnson. But Wiley Green has an opportunity here to be the hero. Put the team on your back. You've got a depleted squad with your, with your skill players. This is a huge moment for Wiley Green in this offense. He's had some heroics on senior day before. Two years ago, he led the Owls over Old Dominion, including a long touchdown run. There he is from the shotgun. Downfield. Incomplete, nearly intercepted. It was Kobe Campbell, the intended receiver, TD Marshall in coverage. Yeah, TD Marshall in coverage. That one felt a little bit forced. I'm not sure. Safety drops on that as well, and TD Marshall is back there. No need to force it yet. Still plenty of time. Second down here. Try and pick up some sort of yardage to get ahead of the sticks. Try and avoid a third and long. Johnson was efficient before the injury. 17 of 23 for 161 yards, and the touchdown pass to Jordan Myers. Ari Broussard in the backfield. Here's Green. Batted down. That's Moultrie. He had the bat down interception against Louisiana Tech. Knocked that one away from Green. Nice play there by Antonio Moultrie. Rice, you saw earlier they run that shallow cross concept that they picked up. They tried to, to do a little wrinkle off of that. It fakes like you're, it looks like you're running that shallow cross. We call it a pivot route where he breaks back out. Actually had receiver open in the flat there, but Moultrie with the you love seeing that out of your defensive linemen. If they're not getting home, they're not getting after the quarterback, J.J. Watt's famous for it, right? Stop the rush, get a hand up, and try and bat the ball down. Three right, one left for Wiley Green from the shotgun. Third and ten. And he goes down at the 22-yard line. It's Jordan Smith. Yeah, I would have liked to see... Wiley Green step up there. The pressure comes up the field. Looked like there was an opportunity to step up there. And now if you're the Owls, got to punt this away and you're asking your defense to, to save you one more time and get one more stop. If you're UAB, you're going to get a chance here to pick up a couple first downs and end this thing and be CUSA West champs. Mendez back to punt. Jermaine Brown waiting for it at the 35-yard line. Rolls past Mitchell and goes dead at the 24-yard line. Three ten on the clock. Rice defense needs another stop. UAB just over three minutes away from its third straight West Division title. Sowles, his message to us yesterday was how much this team loves each other. Well, they need to come together here. 310 left. UAB trying to run out the clock and clinch a third straight Conference USA West Division title. They do it. And for both of these teams, you know, Rice is down quite a few guys. Can't say enough, though, about this UAB performance. Down their top two rushers and a handful of other key starters. How impressive this performance has been. Lucius Stanley picks up a few on first down. It's been a steady diet of Stanley, Jermaine Brown, Larry Wooden, and somewhat unexpectedly, Tyler Johnston, who's had some tough running in the second half. Yeah, and on defense for Rice, good to see both DeBraylin Carroll and Blaze Aldridge back in the game. That's a positive to see some of your, your defensive, your key players, your leadership back out there at this point in the game. Rice has all three timeouts remaining. Under 240 left. They've continued to put three left, one to the right, simply handed it off or kept it with Tyler Johnston. Johnston will keep it. Patient picks up two. That sets up third and five. And we talk about guys being back out there off injury. Trey Schumann back as well. Did a really nice job scraping down the line of scrimmage. We've seen Tyler Johnson in this run game has been very patient, letting the play develop and then cutting back or making a spin move off of it. Trey Schumann scraping down the line of scrimmage. A really nice tackle there to 
stop Tyler Johnson kind of right at the line of scrimmage. Rice uses its first timeout. Most were not sure what to expect. 42 days between games for UAB. On one hand, you might be a bit rusty, not used to game action, but you have six weeks to practice things. So do you think the extra rest and extra time on the practice field has benefited UAB today? I think it has certainly benefited their offensive line and defensive line. I think both of those units having that amount of time to get healthy, work together. You've seen both of them play really well for UAB today. Offensive line especially, very little pressure allowed on Tyler Johnson. And we knew coming into it, they don't give up many sacks. They're top five in the country in sacks allowed as a unit on offense. And really the play of the game here, Rice has to get a stop. Third and five from the 29. Johnston steps up. Johnston picks up the first down. They put Wooden in motion. And Johnston waited for the opening. And they really have found something with Tyler Johnston and using him as a weapon in the run game. Like you talked about, this is not something that on tape you'd seen much of. He battled some injuries, and I think I don't think you expect him to be in designed quarterback run game, but he did such a nice job there. Again, one cut and go. He doesn't make, you know, he's not a real fast guy, but certainly fast enough and, and has extended this drive for them. Andrew Smith, the center, had the open field block on Aldridge on that first down carry. Back to Jermaine Brown. Picks up three. Rice will call time with 141 left in the fourth quarter. Down and seven. Just want to also call out again, UAB's down their top two rushers, their top wide receiver ops out. They're down Colby Raglan at left guard. They had significant starters on both sides of the ball, particularly out of the skill positions. And for this UAB offense to come out the way that they did, hit some of the shot plays that they did, nothing you know, spectacular in the run game for them, but it looks like you know they're going to hold on here, you know, barring some sort of a miracle for Rice. Can't say enough about it. We, we talked earlier also about Bill Clark and what this team has built. Go back to think about the team didn't play football for two years, 15 and 16. They rebuild, and he talked about, look, I got approached. Yeah, I could have gone somewhere else. There were other opportunities out there. But he said, I wanted to stay. If we're going to do this right, I want to do it right. I want to build this thing back up. And they've done it in a big way. And I think the conference is proud of them, and, and they are make, it looks like they're going to make history today representing their side of the conference, CUSA West, for the third year in a row. Coach Clark said it was a crazy time. I was trying to get players, scholarships, and coaches jobs. And they said, we'll fight if you stay. So Coach Clark did just that. Second and seven after the timeout. Johnston hands it off up the middle. Brown. No gain, Schumann, and Kenneth Orgy with the tackle. Loses maybe a yard on that carry. Last timeout for Rice, so 140 left, third down and eight for UAB. I think you run the ball here, bleed the clock, you take off another 40, 45 seconds, because then you're going to punt, ideally if you're, you're UAB, Good punt coverage, put them back you know, inside the 20-yard line. Make Rice go the length of the field with their third-string quarterback and a minute left, right? I don't think you risk throwing the ball here, giving up a sack, a, a you know, tipped ball interception. I think you avoid all that by just running the ball, bleed this clock, and make Rice have to go the length of the field for a touchdown. No matter what happens in this last 100 seconds, I think so much to build on for the Rice Owls. 12 to 15 seniors participated in the Senior Day celebration. Some of them might be coming back next year uh, due to the COVID pandemic. Eligibility rules change. So big foundation entering year four for Coach Bloomgren next year. Third and eight from the 39. Johnston puts Brown in motion. Johnston. Will keep it himself. No gain. And Johnston is sworn to And the, the clock scrimmage. ticks down no from 130. On so again, another opportunity. Wiley Green in this offense will get the ball back. Gonna likely have to go the majority of the field. No timeouts. 
you got, you'll have a couple opportunities to work the middle of the field. Clock stops with a, with a first down, spike the ball. You're going to have to go into your two-minute offense, which if you're Wiley Green, you probably haven't gotten many snaps with the ones or even the twos in a two-minute scenario. So certainly a challenge upcoming for this Rice offense. Kyle Greenwell on to punt from the 30. Myers makes the catch. The catch the they went five. for the punt block. The Greenwell took some contact, some shouting from the UAB bench, but the referee was right there. And the <laughs> getting a chance to watch Greenwell uh, pop back up, that was a good <laughs> job by him. A, a little little gamesmanship there, a little acting. I think, uh, I, I think it was a good no call there by the official. But ball at the 24-yard line, a lot of field ahead of you. Figure out. Go back to that Middle Tennessee game, the last second drive, Trammell with a couple of huge catches. I know he's not in the game, but go to your playmakers, right? Go to your guys in these crunch times. Figure out ways to get the ball to Jordan Myers and Jake Bailey. 37-yard bunt, Green in after the injury to Giovanni Johnson. Wiley Green. Out to the right, catch made. He got out of bounds. First down for Rice, Bailey with the catch. Love the call there, Jake Bailey. Nice job on the comeback, and the timing was great by Wiley Green. Get the ball out of your hands. That's a long throw, the field comeback. That's a difficult throw for young quarterbacks, really for any quarterback. Nice job picking up positive production on that first snap. No timeouts left for Rice. 44 seconds left from the 40-yard line. Green will step up. He runs. Picks up eight, but the clock is ticking. Yeah, I think if you're Wiley Green there, it's better at eight yards. I think you'd rather just take an incompletion there and save the time. Green from the shotgun. 25 seconds left. Out to Myers. Pass deflected near the first down marker. Good coverage on the outside. That was Devondrick Bynum. 20 seconds from almost midfield. Going to have to work the sidelines, and UAB knows that, obviously, with no timeouts. Figure out a way, some sort of rub route, something that gets you some space close to the sideline, maybe a back shoulder fade. Mason, wide left. Griffin on this near side. Wiley Green, third down. Out to the near side, but he does not get out of bounds. Clock running, but a first down catch. For Bailey, 14 seconds left. Green will down it. Green spikes it, 12 seconds left, second down. <laughs> 44 yard line, 12 seconds left. Do you try to get half of it back here? If you take a shot over the middle of the field, you just got to know. Shot over the middle of the field with no timeouts, you just got to know. Rush to the line, get it spiked, put yourself in a more manageable shot at the end zone. Mason's on the near sideline. Here's Green. Sacked! Eight seconds left. Rice will scramble to get one more playoff. Three seconds on the clock. Green spikes it. UAB sideline questioning the clock management from the officials. And I think they should be. I'm not sure. It, it did look like a UAB player was down. And now we got a flag down. It looked like they may have too many men on the field. From the 49-yard line, one last play for Rice. UAB needs one more defensive stop, and they'll win the West Division for the third straight year. Three left, one right for Wiley Green. Whistle was blown. Two 
Two safeties deep at the 10 yard line for UAB. Here's Green. Steps up. Downfield. And it's intercepted at the one yard line. Nearly there for Bailey. UAB hangs on. They're the West Division champion in Conference USA for the third straight year. UAB is headed to the Conference USA championship game for the third straight season. The first team in Conference USA history to do so. Yeah, give Coach Bill Clark and this staff a, a ton of credit. Like we said, at the beginning of the week when we talked to him, it was, guys, we really don't know who we're bringing to Houston. We don't know yet. We've got some COVID issues. And with the team that they put together, had a bunch of key starters out. Give them a ton of credit. This was a big win. Close game, hard fought on both sides. I really thought this came down to UAB hitting their shot plays, and they won the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball and are rewarded with another trip to the Conference USA Championship. Now, Grayson Cash appeared to make the interception. He had a great day today, seven tackles before that final play. Really what we expected between these two teams, very good battle between those two. Now, Cash with his first interception of the season for the redshirt junior. Yeah, you just wonder what happens if Giovanni Johnson stays healthy in this game and is able to, to close out the game. I thought the offense for Rice, unfortunately, became uh, limited a little bit after Giovanni Johnson's injury. And for Rice, I think you got to have uh, – there's optimism moving forward with the amount of guys they have coming back. Congratulations to UAB, Conference USA champion. From the Western Division, for Taylor McCarg, I'm Matt Peterson saying so long from Houston. All games airing on ESPN Networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN.